you, you'll process it. People are just okay. putting, putting it on.
theory a few times, it's also just a style. It's kind of voluntary.
Good morning. For many years, members of the MICA community have read various versions of land acknowledgments. For the past year, MICA has been opening its meetings with a preliminary land, campus-wide land acknowledgment, while a cross-constituent committee worked and collaborated with members of our community and the Baltimore American Indian Center, with whom we will continue to collaborate. Our, our new land acknowledgment has also been reviewed by the Piscataway Tribal Elder. Today, at our commencement, we unveil our new campus land acknowledgement. We begin this event by acknowledging with humility and regret that wherever you live and work in North America, you occupy the traditional lands of native peoples against their will. The lands where the Maryland Institute College of Art is situated are the traditional ancestral lands of the Piscataway and the Susquehannock indigenous peoples. We recognize that the original tribes have been joined through the northern migration by the Lumbee and the Cherokee. We recognize the models they provide for wisdom and caring communities based on mutual respect, reciprocity, and reverence for the land, water, and all relations. We too honor Mother Earth from which all life springs, worthy of our caring stewardship. We acknowledge the people, enslaved and exploited, who did and do work on this land, enabling us to live. We recognize that our current systems are often unjust, that the comfort of many still rests upon the sufferings of others. Here at MICA, we strive to honor the ancestors, to work equitably and honorably towards social justice with their descendants, and to use our talents and resources to work to mitigate past and present injustices. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of you here on this beautiful day. My name is Bao Hu, and it's my honor to welcome you to MICA's 2022 commencement ceremony. Today is an extraordinary graduation day because gathered here are not just the class of 2022, but also the classes of 2021 and 2020. It's truly a joy that we can celebrate together here in person. And on behalf of all three classes, I would like to welcome our honored faculty, alumni, friends, and family. Thank you all for coming. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to faculty, alumni, friends, and families online who couldn't make it in person today. Thank you for sharing our joy and celebrating with us from afar. Finally, to my friends and family online, a 13-hour flight away in Beijing on the other side of the globe, I would like to say a word of welcome in Chinese. 欢迎各位家人和朋友们, Our friends and family know that completing art school is not an easy feat. Your overwhelming support means so much to us. We will never be able to repay you for getting us through those challenging moments. Actually, we still can give you aesthetic advice or I can design your wedding invitation cards. <laughs> not for free though, but I'll give you a special <laughs> discount.
I would also like to thank MICA faculty and administrators here with us today. Thank your passion for helping us grow has provided us with a wonderful and unforgettable educational experience. Thank you for inspiring us and guiding us across the finish line. Your leadership has laid the foundation for our future success, and for that, we're forever grateful. <laughs> Professor Jennifer Cole-Philip recently asked me, Bao, how do you feel about graduating? I responded that I was not ready to graduate because it meant my student journey was over. But Jennifer replied, yes, but there is a new journey ahead. I also consulted with Professor Ellen Lopton, who looked at me with her gentle smile and said, baby, you've got a long future. <laughs> to my fellow classmates, my, you're my best cohort, my supportive team, my home away from home, and I cannot imagine an art school experience any other way. Today marks not just the end, but the beginning of an amazing chapter that I cannot wait to share with you. We have a long future ahead of us, and today our new journey begins. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Bao, for your warm welcome address. Thank you very much. Graduates, proud parents, families, honorees, and other distinguished guests, I'm Samuel Hoy. It is my great pleasure as MICA president and on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and staff to add my welcome to the Maryland Institute College of Arts 2022 commencement ceremony. I join Bao in welcoming back members of the class of 2020 and class of 2021. Yay! Yeah. We know that you miss an in-person commencement due to the pandemic. We are so pleased that you and your guests can return to partake in today's celebration with the class of 2022. Thank you for being here. Dear graduates, congratulations. Your graduation is a genuine occasion for celebration, a celebration of your successful completion of very rigorous studies at MICA, and a celebration of the start of your next chapter, or as Pao has said, your next journey. Today is a joyful day for you and your loved ones. But you know, and we know, the challenges, sweat, tears, sacrifice, and resilience it has taken for you to reach your momentous graduation milestone in the pandemic. You have persevered in individually, and you have supported each other as a community. Please savor the special sweetness of your, of your accomplishment as represented by your graduation. It is a triumph over unprecedented challenges. Our cheers for you are louder out of admiration. Our great hope in you is amplified by the extraordinary times we live in. It is crystal clear now that there's no status quo to return to in a COVID-disrupted world. We count on your innovation for new thinking, new solutions, new spaces for action, and new ways to empower yourselves and others. We need your human-centered and compassionate vision and work that we have witnessed again and again here with you at MICA. The ongoing pandemic, with all the issues and possibilities it has exposed, as well as the essential fight for democracy and justice, are just some critical factors that will inform your opportunities, your challenges, and your charge as artists, designers, educators, and as agents for positive change. Dear graduates, I hope that the fact your studies at MICA have been marked by historic events and by the call for transformative change inspires you to boldly help shape a better reality for all of us. As creative thinkers, educators, and scholars, 
your capacity for cultural action, artistic intervention, and design thinking make you a special kind of leaders and catalysts for change. In addition, our world needs to heal, to celebrate, and to have some of the joy back in our lives. And what can be more joyful and infectious than the vibrant art and design that you create? At MICA, you have infused the college with talent, vibrancy, passion, ideas, and a sense of renewal. Now it is time for you to do the same for our society and for the world at large. So on behalf of the board and staff, but especially on behalf of your faculty, I want to let you know it has been a privilege and a pleasure to have you here at MICA and in the city of Baltimore. We are extremely proud that you'll be representing the college as alumni. Let me conclude by offering you a short poem by Gwendolyn Brooks that speaks powerfully and eloquently about the importance of living and acting with conviction, of our commitment to forward movement, and of the peace we can have with being in the moment and doing our best in the moment. For those who don't know the poem, its title is Speech to the Young, Speech to the Progress Toward. Here it goes. Say to them, say to the downkeepers, the sun slappers, the self-soilers, the harmony hushers, even if you're not ready for day, it cannot always be night. You will be right, for that is the hot home run. Live not for battles won. Live not for the end of the song. Live in the along. Dear graduates, you have our very, very best wishes as you explore your paths and fulfill those great possibilities that are now yours to claim. Congratulations again. We now come to a special portion of the ceremony. It is our custom to present the honorary doctorate each year to individuals who have made remarkable contributions to the arts and to society, and whose achievements represent the standards of excellence to which Maryland Institute College of Art is committed. This year, we have three very special honorees who will provide words of wisdom to our candidates assembled today. And for our first honorary degree recipient, I ask Noor Khan, a candidate for community arts, to please come forward to read the citation for Maria Rosario Jackson. Dr. Jackson, would you please come forward as well? Dr. Maria Rosiero Jackson, throughout your career, your voice has been critical in elevating the value of the arts, culture, and design as essential elements in the creation of healthy, more equitable communities, and your recent appointment as the 13th Chair of the National Endowment for the Arts underscores the significance of your achievements. You and your life's work are an inspiration to us all. Born in Los Angeles, you were raised by parents who wanted to connect you to your history and they did so through the arts of their African-American and Mexican cultures. You were surrounded by books, art, and music, and through experiences large and small, from summers with your mother's family in Mexico, to dance lessons, to discussions about blues lyrics with your father, you formed a lifelong belief that the arts are central to environments that allow people to thrive. You stayed in California to attend school, earning your bachelor's, master's, and doctorate there, and later ventured to the East Coast to the Urban Institute in Washington, D.C. During 18 years with that organization, you led research on the importance of the arts to healthy communities and championed the value of cre creative expression at all levels, from the amateur to the professional. In 2013, you were appointed to the National Council of the Arts, and you later began teaching at the Arizona State University as a tenured professor at the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts. You have also shared your experience in policy and arts administration with an array of notable organizations across the country as an advisor and board member. 
When you were first confirmed last, late last year as the NEA chair by the U US Senate, the impact of that event was multifaceted. You became the first African-American and Mexican-American woman to hold this position. With the appointment coming at a crucial time in our country's history, the power of the arts of creative makers is needed more than ever. As you continue in this new role, it is not just your knowledge and expertise, but also your beliefs that people's imaginations are a nat natural asset on which to build, that ownership of cultural expression is crucial to shaping equitable and healthy communities, and that the arts can be a meaningful tool of change that provide us with a feeling of hope and opportunity. Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson, for your determination, lifelong support of the arts, and authentic community engagement, and for your enduring inspiration, the Board of Trustees of the Maryland Institute College of Art hereby bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you, Noor. Maria Rosario Jackson, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of honor degree of fine arts. I now present to you Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson, who will provide remarks for the assembled guests. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, President Hoy, members of the MICA Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty and staff, Thank you for including me in this wonderful celebration and for this lovely honor. Parents, family, loved ones of our grads, thank you for all you have done to make this possible. And graduates of 2020, 2021, and 2022, congratulations. This is a tremendous milestone, and it has been a challenging couple of years, but you've weathered this trying time and are coming out of it perhaps a bit stronger and a bit wiser for it. The training and experiences that I know you've had here at MICA make me hopeful. Uh, you've been educated to be creative problem solvers, to help us see and understand things from different perspectives to find creative solutions as we strive for a more just world. I see you and I'm hopeful because I'm sure that with your commitment to a better world through arts and design, this is exactly what we need and will go far. My commitment to the arts started at home and it started early. As Sammy said, uh, my parents, or as Noor said, my parents uh, turned to the arts, not because they were artists or wealthy patrons, but because they were looking for another way of helping my brother and me understand who we were, to become proud of our culture, or cultures, plural, um, but also to be curious about the culture of others and to recognize our differences, our similarities, and our common humanity. So early on, the arts were important, and artists and designers I knew were necessary in so many different ways. They help us make sense of the world. They offered us different ways of thinking, feeling, and being. 
They were a source of inspiration and innovation. And so importantly, artists helped us protect and advance our humanity. So as I grew up and went about preparing for my career, I was particularly concerned with the progress of the communities, and specifically the communities that I came from. Having an understanding of those histories, what people had endured, the lasting consequences of harm, and what they continue to face. So I landed in community development and urban planning as my fields. And as I was making my way through that career early, uh, I always thought that the arts needed to be part of the equation, but I found out that everyone didn't necessarily agree. Early in my career, I had well-intentioned colleagues that would ask, why are you doing this arts and culture stuff? You care about inequity, fairness, addressing racism. Why aren't you doing community development or housing? Or why don't you focus on transportation? And the questions frustrated me because I didn't see the arts in a silo, separate from everything else. At their most impactful, I think, arts and design are often woven in, not icing on the cake, but part of the batter and a critically important part of that batter. So sure, I could be interested in affordable housing, but could the housing be well designed? Could it be culturally appropriate? Could it be beautiful and inspiring? Sure, I could be interested in economic development, but can it build from the creativity of the people who've been marginalized, and can they benefit from it? And sure, I could address something like food insecurity, but what would an artful grocery store look like? Thinking beyond what we think of as our lanes is part of what the work ahead is. So these days, from my perch at the National Endowment for the Arts, I talk about the importance of living artful lives, having strong arts and cultural ecosystems that create paths for artists and designers and cultural organizations to help shape our civic infrastructure, what I think of as the mechanisms and arrangements that we rely on to care for each other. And as I think of this, I'm beyond excited to see you step into your power. And as you do that, I want to offer just a few bits of advice. Follow your compass. So get clear on what your work is inside, in your heart, what you know. Choose joy. Even when it's hard, even when things are uncertain, choose joy. Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable for a little while. Be willing to stretch and grow and try to find connection. Cultivate a culture of possibility. The opportunity that you may want or need may not always be obvious. You might have to reinterpret something. Or it might not even be in existence and you might have to invent it. Find your tribe, that is the people who inspire you, who support you, people who make you better. Some of your tribe is right here, right now, from Micah. Others may come from generations in the past. Bring them into the room with you when you have to do something that requires courage. They'll have your back. Have fun, laugh, be generous, be grateful, dream. Have the courage to follow your imagination. Tell your truth, choose your battles. Be aware of the context and adapt as you need, but don't be distracted by naysayers or noise. Tap into your, car, into your core and do you. You've been prepared to continue your journey and deliver your gifts, and I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, for your words of wisdom. I now ask Jimena Guerrero Alecon, a candidate for data analytics and visualization, please come forward to read the citation for our second honorary degree recipient, Georgia Lupi. Dr. Lupi, would you please come forward as well? Thank you. 
Georgia Lupi this occasion allows us to celebrate your groundbreaking work and the humanity you bring to the field of data analysis. As an artist, designer, and advocate, your innovative approach to data interpretation is not only beautiful, it has inspired a new generation of creatives. Your fascination with data began as a child in your native Italy, where you would organize everything from sales receipts to your grandmother's buttons, taking great pleasure in categorizing these treasures. This childhood interest grew into a career. After you studied architecture, you worked with two design firms to create interactive installations and mapping projects. You later obtained a PhD in design at Milan Politecnico, and in 2011, you co-founded Accurat, an acclaimed data-driven research, design, and innovation firm with offices in Milan and New York, and whose clients included Google and the United Nations. In 2019, you became an information designer and partner at the renowned international design consultancy Pentagram. Other recent accomplishments include joining MIT Media Lab as Director's Fellow, which led you to your selection as one of Fast Company's 100 most creative people in business, an appointment to the World Economic Forum's Global Future Council on New Metrics, and being named a Royal Society of Art Fellow. Throughout your practice, you have consistently created compelling visual narratives, using impersonal data to reconnect numbers to stories, people, and ideas. And because data, as you have said, represents real life, you introduced and fostered the concept of data humanism, a more personal approach to collecting, analyzing, and visualizing data. First broaching the subject in Print Mag in 2016, and later developing a TED Talk, which now has over a million views. This idea can be seen in your art, which uses data to visualize your life, and your work in this area is part of the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art and the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, and has been exhibited in galleries and museums and at major design events around the world. Georgia Lupi, you are a role model to many, including within the MICA community, who are committed to making art with purpose. For a practice filled with passion, and for your outstanding ability to fuse data with beauty and humanity, the Board of Trustees of the Maryland Institute College of Arts awards you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Giorgio Lupi, by, the, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts. I now present to you all Dr. Lupi, who will provide remarks to our graduates. Um, dear graduates, dear, dear graduates, hello. It's really a great honor to be with you today and to receive this special degree. First of all, today is a moment for you, for each one of you to pause, acknowledge, and feel the incredible work you have done to get here. Don't take it for granted, especially after the past two crazy years we've all been through. As designers and artists, you bring and are about to bring even more loudly a fundamental voice to the current and future conversations. As designers and artists, you will be part of shaping the way people perceive the most important issues in our planet and society. Justice, climate, health, human rights, politics, economy, education. Design and art have the power to move the needle about how we see things 
they can change the way we talk about everything that matters, especially in a world that desperately needs to change the way we operate. So this is a very, 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 very inspiring moment. It is very inspiring also because you are about to make your way into another chapter of your life, the one where you will make an impact in the world, whatever path you will decide to take. It is a very exciting moment, but it can be a pretty terrifying one. At least I remember my graduation day as more terrifying than thrilling. What do I really do? What is the path? What are the steps I should take? What about tomorrow, the next month, the next year, the next 10 years? How do I make sure I make the right moves and I make no mistakes? How do I choose? Where do I start? Let me tell you something that I have learned, that there is no one path. There is no one route. There is no one way. There is not the way to be a great and successful designer and artist, but there is your way your unique own way that is defined and driven by your own evolving and ever-changing definition of success for your life, first and foremost. There is your unique way of making an impact in the world, in this world, the impact that you're already discovering step by step and that you will be discovering all along. This way, this path, does not have to look like anybody else's. It actually really shouldn't, and this is beautiful. I graduated 15 years ago, and the past 15 years have really taught me that you can create and enjoy your own path, an ever-changing one, actually. I graduated in architecture, which is far away from what I'm doing now, and I graduated in Ferrara, Italy. Until 10 years ago, I didn't even speak a word of English, and I didn't even think I would move out of Italy. Looking back, what strikes me is that I deeply would have wanted to have it all figured out already then, to know what I was going to do, to have a plan. Now, looking back, I'm really glad I didn't. I'm glad that somehow I've been open enough to change my plans, to accept what was not working, and change direction over and over. It might feel that you have to know everything to get started, but I would say embrace the sense of not knowing. Embrace the sense of possibilities, and even embrace the sense of insecurity about what you're doing, because likely you will always have to deal with it. At least, certainly I am. It doesn't go away, and that's okay. Again, there is no one path. It is about what intrigues you, what you are obsessed with, and not only in the design world and in the art world, in the whole world. Everything will inform and shape your path and make it unique, because you will process things through your own particular eyes and your own way of thinking. Listen, observe, be a sponge, take notes on what attracts you, attract your attention and interest. And lastly, do not wait for permission. Give yourself the permission to explore and start and make today. Start today, because this is what is really important for our world. The whole world is in a moment of deep uncertainty, we have to act now and help now. In the end, socially informed design, in the end, socially informed design can really change the, whole, the way that we see things. As the battle should change opinions at a high level, to envision better futures and to make them happen. If there is one starting point that I would suggest is starting with people listening and working with the people who have deep personal stake in the important challenges that we're facing as a planet, the people that are personally affected by them. We have to redesign the world, well, most of it, step by step. It is our job, and now it is your job too. And I couldn't think of a more exciting path to start discovering. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Lupi, for your words of encouragement and student advice. Now I ask Nia Ricks, a candidate in curatorial practice, please come forward to read the citation of our final honor degree recipient, Anthro Piatella.
Mr. Piatella, would you please come forward as well? Thank you, Amir. Antero Piatella, we recognize your exemplary career as a journalist, author, and speaker. For over four decades, you have illuminated the complex history of Baltimore and revealed how racially discriminatory practices by governments, businesses, and institutions have shaped cities around the world. Born in Finland, you were so intent to visit the United States that in 1964, you worked your way across the ocean on a freighter. You were an aspiring journalist seeking to work and experience a summer in New York City, a diverse metropolis so unlike the homogenous nature of your country of birth. You spent much of your time there in Harlem, where you were introduced to this country's history of racial discrimination and its impact on the cities and neighborhoods in which its citizens live. You later obtained an MA in journalism at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, and then moved to Maryland to begin what would be a 35-year career with the Baltimore Sun. During your early years here, you covered everything from civil rights demonstrations and school desegregation to the anti-war movement and the growth of Baltimore County, a separate jurisdiction that seemed to be overtaking the city. In 1980, you established the Sun's Bureau in Johannesburg, South Africa, where only the country's white minority had full political and economic rights under apartheid. From there, you went to the Soviet Union as bureau chief and witnessed the political and social reforms that would lead to the eventual dissolution of the Soviet state. In almost every one of those locations, you observ observed what sociologists call succession, the term for ethnic, racial, and economic transitions of neighborhoods. It was that subject you delved into when, after a return to Baltimore and a stint on the Sun's editorial board, you retired and turned your hand to writing books. Among those are Not in My Neighborhood, How Bigotry Shaped a Great American City, and The Ghosts of John Hopkins, both of which use Baltimore as a case study in how institutions and powerful people helped create the racial legacies and physical landscape of cities across America. Antero Piatella, your work and insights on matters of public policy and race deeply informs us. And as MICA's community believes wholeheartedly in the vital role creativity can play in awakening social consciousness and driving mindful action toward justice, it is our privilege to celebrate you today. For your wisdom and inspiration, the Board of Trustees of the Maryland Institute College of Art awards you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you, Nia, for this reading citation. Antero Piatella, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. I now present to you Dr. Piatella, who will provide some final thoughts to our graduates. Thank you, President Hoy. Thank you, MICA community. This is really something beyond my wildest dreams. Thank you again. What is life? Some 400 years ago, the Spanish playwright Pedro Calderón de la Barco pondered that question, what is life? He answered, all life is a dream. My fellow dreamers, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today as an aging dreamer. 
I particularly think about how a dream changed my own life in 1964. I was a 20-year-old budding journalist living in my native Finland. My language was Finnish, my English was rough at best. But I wanted so badly to experience the United States that I got a job as a deckhand on a freighter and spent the summer in New York. New York's around-the-clock vitality and its amazing diversity stunned me. I was hooked. After I returned to Finland, I kept dreaming. As a result of those dreams, I came back to go to graduate school, became a local reporter for the Baltimore Sun, which eventually sent me to Africa for two years and then to the Soviet Union for five. When I returned to daily journalism in Baltimore, I began collecting documentation for a book about how bigoted real estate practices led to wholesale racial change in the Baltimore metropolitan area's neighborhoods after World War II. I completed Not in My Neighborhood, my first book, just in the nick of time. It could not be duplicated today because the people I interviewed are all gone, as are many of their papers. This compels me to talk about heeding the urgency of the moment. One of the fallacies of life is that tomorrow is guaranteed. It is not. Every day is a gift. Take advantage of that gift. I congratulate you, the graduates of 2022, on this magnificent day. You are at the peak of your learning capacity. You are at the height of your creativity. Know this. We aging dreamers admire you. We also envy you for the experiences ahead of you. How we could want to be in your place and relive our dreams. Some of us may even moan that youth is wasted on the young. This is your time, your window of a unique opportunity. Be you, see the world, take risks, be passionate, be outrageous, seize the moment, have no regrets. Everything is possible. Life is a dream. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Tiffany Holmes. I'm the Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost at MICA. I'm here to introduce our student speaker, but before then, I need to acknowledge two important members of our faculty who are retiring this year. Faculty are the heart and soul of MICA. We have two extraordinary teachers whom we celebrate today. We would like to thank John Penny, from the MFA and Studio Arts Program, and Jan rosen from the Reinhardt School of Sculpture for their contributions to the MICA graduate community. We wish you well as you start your new chapters. You will be deeply missed and always remembered. It is now a round of applause for our faculty. It is now my great honor to introduce Jordan Cannon, this year's graduate commencement student speaker. Jordan was born in Hagerstown, Maryland, and currently resides in Smithsburg with her partner, two dogs, and two rabbits. Jordan is a soon-to-be graduate of the MFA in Illustration Practice Program. Her work is focused on experimental narrative work, mainly within the genre of magical realism. After graduation, Jordan hopes to pursue publication as a writer and illustrator working in experimental comics, picture books, and graphic novels, as well as continuing her ongoing work as a medical massage therapist. Please join me in welcoming Jordan to the podium.
thank you for the introduction. I definitely have never been introduced before, and it feels very powerful. <laughs> there is a certain kind of tenacity we all had to possess to not only enter a program of study, but to do so during these uncertain times. We made the impossible decision to press pause on the normal routine of our lives, the momentum of paying bills, day jobs, grocery shopping, to enroll in graduate school because we knew it was important and we knew the time was now. The two most essential things we have to invest in this life are our time and our energy. Micah has allowed us to use both of these to the best of our ability. During our time in our respective programs, we spent countless hours working, creating, recouping, and we did so not to prove we were attentive students, successful artists, or even exemplary educated professionals. We are already these things in the deepest, most authentic version of ourselves. We did so to prove that in the midst of the stress and pressure of graduate school, a global pandemic, an unimaginable state of the world, a world which lacked hope, we didn't lose our sense of purpose and the fervor to pursue it. We didn't give up. We best served our time, our energy, our resources here at MICA to fulfill those pesky dreams inside of us that cannot be silenced. When I sat down to write a speech to be considered one of the speakers here today, I didn't sit down to write a speech really. I more so just used it as an excuse to take time to reflect what I felt about these last two years. In doing so, I realized how much pride and appreciation I have for the MICA community. To our professors and mentors, thank you for encouraging us, teaching us, and guiding us when we needed it most for persevering through technological mishaps and an ever inconsistent pandemic to make sure we knew you had our backs through all of it. To all the staff here at MICA, thank you for keeping things running and for creating a safe campus, which we were able to return to knowing you would help keep us safe and in good health. To our families, friends, partners, thank you for rallying with us and at times being just as emotionally invested in our projects as we were, so much so you deserve a degree here today. To my cohort, fellow students, and collaborators, it was pure magic to see us support each other, especially during the year on Zoom. We reached out to each other during an isolating time, whether that was by sending photos of house plants and pets, progress shots of art and craft endeavors, words of encouragement, weekly reminders of assignments, questions about aspects of assignments we were struggling with. We checked in with each other just to see how we were managing the day today, and I am awe-inspired we did all of this before we met in person. When we finally got back to campus and saw each other in person for the first time, it was like meeting our long-lost pen pals. The support of each other only strengthened with the return to campus. We felt re-energized being able to be surrounded by creative energy. By having the opportunity to have classes with individuals across majors, getting to take elective courses within our fields and outside of it, we were able to feel the inspiration that can come from being able to look over each other's shoulders and create in a mutual physical space. We utilize being back on campus to connect, to collaborate, to explore but we also learned when to advise each other when to retreat to our home offices, take a break and watch Netflix, or to do whatever we needed to do to balance work and play and rest. Before we get too swept up in what comes next, I ask you to give yourself time to celebrate and time to reflect. It can be so hard to find moments to pause, flip through, and marvel at your accomplishments. Sometimes we get so engaged in the work we are creating in the moment of creating it, we forget to appreciate the experiments along the way, to copy down words from our, of encouragement from our critiques and conversations, and just sit with it a while. I also ask you to take time to really think about who you are as a maker. Even if you enrolled in MICA already with a distinct style, brand, or method of design, what risks did you take during your time here? 
What did you learn from those times that you had to reach beyond your comfort zone? What mediums or new technologies have you found that you now can't imagine your practice without? Just in my cohort alone, Paloma made her thesis entirely from wood, a medium she had never used before, and she made so many toys and sculptures, she practically made an army of them. Sarah approached her thesis as an educator, an environmentalist, and someone so in love with textiles, she made us want to question where our clothes come from with a conscious mind. Lexi utilized every medium that made her happy and feel in touch with play, whether that was felting, tufting, or composing a zine. Hao Chen made soft sculptures and ceramics that invited us into her world of butterflies, which was childlike and fun, but had a philosophy behind it that brought us to tears. Don Yen dove straight into her psyche to find the reason she's attracted to animation, patterns, and monsters, and then made everything that came out of her imagination. Olivia told us a story with characters so detailed and alive, we wanted to jump into her words and images and be embraced by her world. Shiran painted a mural, used directional speakers and 3D elements to enhance the meaning behind her comic that brought awareness to skin conditions. And I made an experimental comic with aspects of what I love from children's picture books as well as adult graphic novels because it is the book I have needed so many times but hasn't been made yet. My cohort and I had the courage to advocate that each and every one of these are examples of illustration. And everyone, and I really do mean everyone I have encountered at MICA, has done the same, with a passion to challenge the definition of art and push their own perception of creativity. We have that power as artists, and it is our constant job to vocalize and help others to better understand the mysteries and endless possibilities of art and making. When we are all engrossed in our creative careers and living our professional lives, I know we will put these graduate degrees to good use. But I also know we will bring forth what we learned from our time remote, as well as on campus, to know when to team up if the task is too big for one person, know when to seek expertise, we will know when to do the research, we will know when to stop, rest, and prioritize health and self-care, we will know how to find ways to re-energize and realign with our purpose for making, even in times of hardship or change. We will know when to reach out to our MICA community, friends and family, when to relish the quiet, turn off technology, and play in the dirt. It is all important. It is all part of the process of dreaming and doing. I will leave you with one more thought. This past finals week, I was exhausted and truly had to wake up every single day and give myself a pep talk just to enter the day. Just when I thought I was too tired and too close to the end to be inspired one more time, Professor Carla Speed McNeil left our advanced sequential art class with a, p with a piece of advice I found personally so inspiring, I might have to tell myself it every day like forever. They said, get to know who inhabits your mind. Listen to every single one of those voices that are telling you to keep making and are keeping you curious. And then, find the people who can talk to those voices. As someone who is a writer-illustrator about to undergo the daunting task of reaching out to publishers, finding my audience, and my own marketability, I sometimes worry that my stories are too weird for the world. But just as we have found at MICA, and as Carla so poignantly put, if we embrace who we are, make what we are inspired to make, we will find our people. They are out there and they are waiting to appreciate and be moved by our art. <laughs> Isn't that like really exciting? <laughs> I think congratulations and we did it are the understatements of the century, but we really did do it and all for the love of making. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jordan, for your excellent remarks. It is now my honor to present to you Freddie Gross, MICA trustee and former chair of the Board of Trustees, who will present some very special honors. Current Board Chair Stuart Clark cannot join us today, 
due to health recovery, but he sends his best and warmest congratulations to all for this very special occasion. Good afternoon. Today I have the privilege of honoring special members of the MICA community and the MICA faculty. MICA is an exceptional educational institution because of the tireless contributions of all our faculty members and the MICA community. Last night at an awards ceremony in her honor, Ashley Minner was bestowed the MICA's with MICA's highest alumni award, the Alumni Medal. Ashley's dedication to community art and advocacy for the recognition of the American Indian cultural legacy exemplifies some of the college's most fundamental beliefs, that creativity can drive mindful action and artists can be a transformational force in society. A member of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, Ashley was raised in Baltimore, where a significant population of Lumbee Indians have called home for over half a century. Ashley chose to attend MICA to pursue a BFA and then continued to study in MICA's then newly launched Masters in Community Arts program, working with the people in her community for her thesis. Ashley wasn't able to join us today, but please join me in congratu congratulating Ashley in absentia for all her accomplishments, including exemplifying cultural leadership and social commitment. Ashley is a powerful example of how artists and their act, art, can elevate society. In recognition for all that she has achieved, Maryland Institute College of Art is proud to bestow on her the Alumni Medal for 2022. The Michael faculty are artists, designers, scholars, and teachers who are deeply committed to their students and to the quality of the MICA educational experience across 20 undergraduate programs. I want to take this moment to invite these faculty members to stand and be recognized by our graduating students and their families and guests. I now have the distinct pleasure to recognize two members of our exceptional faculty with the Trustee Fellowship for Excellence in Teaching Awards. These individuals were selected by the students and trustees for their commitment, enthusiasm, and selfless devotion to our students and the college. Lacey Girard brings many years of experience as a user ex experience design professional. Lacey has been an adjunct faculty member since 2021 teaching utility and usability, focusing on human factors and usability testing and UX tools, exploration and analysis. One of Lacey's students had this to say, I really appreciated that Lacey took time in each class in with, the, uh, in with the cohort in terms of our energy level and also how much we might already know or not know about the course material we were going to cover in class that evening. I also just really appreciate having that point of empathy at the beginning of class every week. As L UCN's design thinking lead, she has extensive experience in moderating, moderating workshops and conversations which lead to innovative ideas and product discovery. Her, her work focuses on identifying, sorting, and problem solving 
for innovation design in higher education. Our next honoree is Sukyun Lee. an English language learning specialist in graduate studies. Her courses are sought after and students seek her out individually for consultation on their creative research and in relation to their intercultural experiences while here at MICA. Since beginning at MICA in 2018, Su Kyung has created numerous new courses across the graduate studies curriculum, most recently a set of four co courses that comprise the emphasis in intercultural communication, which broke new curricular ground at MICA by bringing together international and domestic students for elective liberal arts courses that equipped them um, with intercultural communication skills, uh, to navigate an increasingly diverse society and globalized world. Beyond the classroom, Sukyan provides annual workshops for graduate faculty, graduate program assistants, and others who work with and for graduate students. Of particular note during the pandemic, Sukyan developed a series of online co-curricular experiences called Speaking Nearby which engaged our community in deep conversations about how we might better listen to and communicate with each other. Shukan goes above and beyond in helping her students learn and grow, and she does it with compassion and kindness. Will Lacey and Sukyan please come forward? I guess Lacey isn't here. <laughs> oh. Stacy? Sukyun, congratulations. <laughs> Lacey? Lacey's not here. So um, thank you very much, Lacey, and we'll give you a round of applause wherever you are. Caring, brilliant. I'm going to call Dr. Lachey Harvey up to stand here. And now, caring, brilliant, generous, welcoming, savvy, and a great communicator. These are all words used to describe MICA's 2022 Distinguished Service to Graduate Students Award E. Dr. Lachey Harvey, Interim Associate Dean for Student Learning and Research and Graduate Studies, has all of these qualities in abundance.
which she harnesses to create a space where all graduate students feel a sense of belonging and possibility. As one student said, from the moment I met her during orientation weekend, her warm smile and big energy have never wavered. She goes above and beyond for students. I am delighted to present Dr. Lachey Harvey with this award. It is now my great pleasure to honor graduate students who have received special distinctions, merits, awards, scholarships, and recognition. The names of our distinguished graduates and their honors are identified in your commencement program. Will the students who have received one or more award please stand and be recognized now by your families, faculty, and peers. Stand, distinguished graduate students. Thank you. You may be seated. Next, I would like to congratulate all of the students of the graduating classes of 2022, 2021, and 2020. You have inspired me with your passion and persistence in unprecedented times. And I am privileged to participate in this very special in-person commencement ceremony to acknowledge your achievements. Let's enjoy this and celebrate together. Congratulations. Are you ready? We've come to the portion you've been all waiting for, the conferral of degrees. We will now begin the conferral degrees by presenting first the candidates for the Master of Fine Arts. With Provost Holmes, Vice Provost Salazar, Vice Provost David Graziani, Vice President for Student Affairs, Mike Patterson, Associate Dean Lachey Harvey, Associate Dean Aaron Joukowsky, and Director of Graduate Study Success, Dashiell Horn, please come forward for the conferral of degrees. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in Community Arts please come forward? And will Paula Phillips, Director, please come forward to congratulate your candidates? Hi, my name is Paula Phillips. I am the Director, Faculty, and Residency Coordinator for the MFA in Community Arts program here at MICA. I'd like to introduce you to Alexa, Elliot, Josh, Kenneth, Mama Rashida, Noor, and Vaughn. You have been amazing. This has been one of the most incredible journeys that we as your faculty and me of my, as your director have experienced with MFACA students. You've been through adversity. You have remained committed. You are a unit, a cohort, and we wish you well in everything that you do, always and always. Continue to move forward. Remember who you are. Do your best and wishes, peace, all of the good things for you in life. Noor Khan. Mama Rashida Foreman Bay. Vaughn Knapper. <laughs> A 
Alexa Janae Oliveira. Sarah Golden, Class of 2020. Xiao Chu Chi, Class of 2020. Janae Collins, Class of 2021. Laura Sly, Class of 2020. Joshua Olson. <laughs> Elliot Heiger. <laughs> Kenneth Craig Clemens. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in curatorial practice please come forward? And will Jose Ruiz, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? My name is Jose Ruiz, director of the curatorial practice MFA program. It is my honor to introduce you to the curatorial practice MFA graduates. Congratulations for expanding what it means to curate, organize, and lead in times of unprecedented change. Julia S. Salafsky. <laughs> Mia Ricks. <laughs> Yajida Zalika Washington. <laughs> Megan Klink. <laughs> Hannah Davis, class of 2020. Amani Haynes, class of 2020. <laughs> will, the will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in filmmaking please come forward? And will Kirsten Hollander, director, please come forward to congratulate your candidates? Congratulations to Mike, this class of 2022. My name is Kirsten D'Andrea Hollander, Director of MFA Filmmaking, and I would like to honor the work of our graduating class, Jimmy, Gilly, Nick, Avery, and Chib. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for staying true to your voices and your cinematic vision. Thank you for telling the stories that only each of you can tell. I can't wait to see what next you bring into the world. We need your work in this world. And remember that graduation is not an ending, but it is just a beginning of your brilliant, brilliant filmmaking careers. Gillian Goodwin. Nick Tucker. Chibazor Ayemenem. Travis Barato, class of 2020. Jimmy Thomas. Avery Griffin. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in graphic design please come forward? And will Jennifer Cole Phillips, director, please come forward to congratulate your candidates? Congratulations, G, D, 
MFA class of 2022. Bao, Jeff, Henry, Matt, Lena, Madeline, Megan, Richa, Shulin, Shinron, Yanji. Have a fantastic celebration. We love you. Love you. Bao Hu. Shivani Parsnis, class of 2020. Vivek Thacker, class of 2020. James Marshall, class of 2020. Aswari Kolkarni, class of 2020. Katerine Huertas, class of 2020. Anjali, Anjali Nair, class of 2020. Ashika Chandri, class of 2021. Anna Tobin, class of 2021. Monica Vutakori, class of 2021. Yanji Chen. Shulin Lu. Yohi Park, BFA 2020 Magnum Cum Laude. Risha Podar. Chiran Tso. Henry Roderick. Madeline Evans Sneedon Page. Matthew Seth Holbin. Megan Rebecca Irwin. Jeff Glenn Denning. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates from Leroy E. Hofberger School of Painting please come forward? And will Joan Walter, Math Director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Thank you, Penn Eastburn, for doing the Hofburger video. <laughs> Timo Kuzme, class of 2020. <laughs> Arthur Youngblood. <laughs> Stephen Pennock Eastburn. Eric Chris Schneider. Edward Moore. Colleen Harkins. Christopher Graham.
Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in illustration practice please come forward and will Robin Phillips Pendleton, Interim Director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? I'm Robin Phillips Pendleton and I'm the Interim Director of the MFA in Illustration Practice Program. Congratulations to our graduating class of 2022. I proudly introduce to you Jordan Cannon, Paloma Diaz Dixon, Ziran Luo, Lexi Nielsen, Dong Yang Shu, Sarah Etherton, Olivia Sanders, Hao Cheng Jia, and Stella Wei. You have persevered through many trials and tribulations to get where you are today. I am so excited for you to embark on your new journey. All of you will do wonderful things in the world. Please keep in touch and all my very best to each and every one of you. Jordan Cannon. Lexi Nelson. Paloma Diaz Dixon. Ho Chen Zhao. Sarah Etherton. Dong Yang Chu. Olivia Sanders. Stella Wei. Chiron Liu. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates from Mount Royal School of Art please come forward? And will Luca Bavoli, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Hello, my name is Luca Bovoli. I am the director of Mount Royal School of Art, multidisciplinary MFA here at MICA. I would like to congratulate all of you Mount Royal graduates. You have managed to develop a significant group of works in these challenging times and created a path for future success. I hope you will keep cultivating your friendships and the knowledge that you have absorbed. I wish you all the best for a post-pandemic world. Bon Antonetti, class of 2020. Tyler Wilson, class of 2020. Aditi Hazra, class of 2021. Walter Cruz. Francesca Allender Louise Dorsey. Chen Zi Zhang. Candice Ira Hoffman Kramer. Kishan Huang. Daryl Hines. Will the Master of Fine Art candidates in photographic and electronic media please come forward? And will Bill Gaskins, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Congratulations to the graduating cohort, the last graduating cohort from the program in photographic and electronic media at MICA. I want to thank you for joining this program, this director, and each other in the midst of a global pandemic and for navigating the known, the unknown, and the unexpected over the last two years. Each 
of your futures are as bright as your imaginations. So remember what that grand Afrofuturist Sun Ra said. The possible has been tried and has failed. It is time to try the impossible. Congratulations. Brayden Morrison. Beverly Alicia Price. Jin Jin Liu. <laughs> Dylan Yang. <laughs> Chen Ji. <laughs> Alisa Regal. <laughs> Tyler Grimes, class of 2021. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates from Reinhardt School of Sculpture please come forward and will Dolores Zinni, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates. Dear Reinhardt School of Sculpture 2022 graduates, Kelly Gillespie, David Alpert, Alex Rood, Geoff Christ, congratulations, you made it. You all realize amazing work. I have a lot of faith in you. You will do great. You have a lot to say. Please don't get lost. Come again. We will miss you. And we are very, very proud of you. Thank you. Kelly Marie Gillespie. Jeffrey Christ. Alexander Valentine Rudd. Will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in studio art please come forward and will Fabienne Lasserre, co-director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Hello, I'm Zlata Baum, co-director of the MFA in Studio Art program, also known as MFAST. Big congratulations go to the MFAST class of 2021, who finished up last summer. This would be Cindy Voinovich, David Salgado, Denise King-Ashley, Joe Corcoran, Leslie Wren, Lindsay Caputo, Matilda Lozell, Nancy Edelstein, Vianne Wyen, and Wendy Tripolsky. All of us MFAST faculty are so very proud of you and your deep engagement and hard work over the past three years in the summer. As we all know, it wasn't an easy path, but you persevered and created remarkable, thoughtful, genuinely engaging thesis work. Can't wait to see where you go next. Cheers and best wishes. Laura Happenstein. Cerebel Santos Negron, class of 2020. Nikki Brooks, class of 2020. Michelle Herman, class of 2020. Nugent Kolsialny, class of 2020. Elizabeth Ann Miller, class of 2020. Cindy Bonovich. Matilda Lazelle. Joseph Cochran. David Salgado. <laughs> Leslie Wren. <laughs> Vianne Wen. <laughs> De 
Denise King Ashley. Provost Holmes, this completes the presentation of candidates for the Master of Fine Arts. President Hoy, I have the honor of recommending those students who have satisfied all of the requirements for the degree of Master of Fine Arts. Will the candidates please rise? It's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure for me to say the following words. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Fine Arts with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to this honorable degree. Yay! <laughs> Please join me in congratulating again the Master of Fine Arts graduates of Maryland Institute College of Art, and we will next present the candidates for the Master of Art. Thank you. <laughs> Will the Master of Arts in Design Leadership offered with the Cary Business School of the Johns Hopkins University candidates please come forward? Hello, my name is Dashiell Horn, and I've had the honor of being the Director of Graduate Student Success for Open Studies during these last two years, and therefore having been able to witness this incredible group of students. Congratulations to our Mamba Nines, the Design Leadership Class of 2022. As the pandemic cohort, you have been called upon to show unparalleled resilience and ingenuity just to progress through your coursework. You've also taught me, though, that Mambas are not satisfied with just regular level impressive. You all go above and beyond to, oh, wow, I didn't even know that was possible, level impressive. From starting your own successful design studios and consultancies while enrolled in 15 plus credits per semester, to landing dream jobs at top firms, you have exceeded all conceivable expectations already. You are poised to bring human-centered design to industries which sorely need it, and we in Open Studies have absolutely no doubts that the next 10 years will see Mamba 9 alumni changing the face of human resources, education, finance, medicine, journalism, technology, maybe even fashion. We will be eagerly watching your progress and continuing to cheer for you and your inevitable accomplishments. Congratulations, Mambas. Frank Giamo, class of 2020. Alicia Sosha, class of 2020. <laughs> Ellie Nam. <laughs> Emily Unes. Omar Daniel Bonilla. <laughs> Caress Adrian Spencer. <laughs> Guy Earl Wendell DeWeaver II. <laughs> Iman Carr. Court 
Courtney Morgan. <laughs> Lindsay Sarah Moskowitz. <laughs> Jennifer Susan Mizgata. <laughs> Julia Lizette Breskin. Emma Campbell Karamshahi. Will the Master of Arts candidates in graphic design please come forward? And will Sandra Max, the director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Congratulations to the class of 2022 and a special congratulations to the graphic design Master of Arts candidates graduating this year. Erica, Eric, Haley, Japing, Kai, Nikki with the C, Tiana, McKinley, Nikki with an H, Zoe, Tingyu, Danielle, Bumi, Maya, and Austin. We are so proud of all that you've accomplished and can't wait to see what you do next. You continue to amaze us with your engaging design projects, your collaborative spirit, and your passion for your communities. I wish you all the success and happiness as you continue on your path in design. Congratulations. Katie Orgazalik, class of 2020. Nikki Hall, the great. <laughs> Maya Podic Holmes. <laughs> Eric Benoit. <laughs> Kai Chevalier. <laughs> Erica Argelin. McKinley Elizabeth Gillespie. <laughs> Wen Jing Lin. <laughs> Austin Wilkes Talley. <laughs> Ting Yu Lu. <laughs> Boomy Mystery. Nikki Chopra, <laughs> Jay Ping Chen, <laughs> Haley Brommel, <laughs> Tiana Connor, <laughs> will the Master of Fine Arts candidates in illustration please come forward, and will Rebecca Bradley, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Good morning, my name is Rebecca Bradley and I'm the Programme Director of the MA in Illustration. I'd like to introduce you to the MA in Illustration graduates of 2022. Star, Angie, Sinki, Phoebe, Leah, Daja, Christopher, Kai, Shasha, Lava, Anusha, Megan and Kennedy. Congratulations to you all for working so hard and accomplishing a lot in a very short time. You've got a lot ahead of you and I'm going to be so excited to see what you're going to do. Keep in touch and congratulations. Leah Rice. Kennedy Ketchum. <laughs> Megan Sayer. <laughs> Anji Shi. <laughs> Shintong Shen. <laughs> Jaru Zhang. 
Dejia Tzu. Shasha Hu. Lava Wu. Anusha Raichor. Sinky Huang. Kai Rashawn Lewis Wright. Christopher Alexander Williams. Will the Master of Arts candidates in social design please come forward? And will Thomas Gardner, Interim Director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? I'm Thomas Gardner, Interim Director of the MA in Social Design Program. And I'd like to introduce the MASD Class of 2022. Elizabeth, Allison, Allison, <laughs> Emily, Matt, Ellie, Larissa, Rhea, Kennedy, Hannah, Devani, and Deja. It's been an extraordinary year. I'm incredibly proud of all you've accomplished. I'm honored to welcome you as colleagues. Congratulations, social designers. John Benton Denny, class of 2021. Allison Kim. Elizabeth Antoinette Emmett. Matthew Coles. Kennedy A. McDaniel. Tian Chi. Larissa Hawkins. Allison Joy Tomlinson. Devani Shah. Hannah Lee Young. Deja Dene. Rhea Gupta, class of 2022. Alana Nicole Davis, class of 2021. Khadija Hart, class of 2020. Vadisha Argawala, class of 2020. Gwen Richards, class of 2020. <laughs> will the Master of Arts candidates in teaching please come forward, and will Lisa Hockstrip, director, come forward to congratulate your candidates? Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Lisa Hochtritt, the director of the MA in Teaching Program. I'm so excited to introduce you to the graduating cohorts of 2020, 2021, and 2022. The MIT faculty and I are so impressed with your creative resilience, your stick to itness, and your general all around brilliance. Art and art education are so vital, and we are thrilled that you are the next generation of art teachers in pre-K through 12 schools. You managed a lot during these past few years, and you persevered, leading with your kind hearts and dedication to the young people with whom you work. Thank you so much for all you do and all you've done. 
Introducing the unstoppable visionaries and MAT graduates from 2020, 2021, and 2022. Congratulations. Sage A. Baxter. Yael Tamar Bloom, BFA 2021, summa cum laude. Julia M. Brennan. Beatrice Brown, BFA 2021. Kira Taylor Brown, BFA 2021, summa cum laude. Brianna Brummett Swayze. Sarah Alana Ferron, BFA 2021 cum laude. Lauren Michaela Jackson, BFA 2020, magnum cum laude. Sohee Lim. Darian Nashawn Murray, BFA 2021. Rachel Elise Patterson, BFA 2021 Magnum Cum Laude. Yonif Paulina Cantania Mendoza, BFA 2021 Cum Laude. Kiva Michelle Richardson. Asrana Simmons L. Asriana Simmons L, BFA 2021. Dana Saperko. Talia Skiles, BFA 2021, summa cum laude. Troy Taylor, BFA 2021. Jillian Tibay, BFA 2021, cum laude. Provost Holmes, this completes the presentation of candidates for Master of Arts. <laughs> President Hoy. I have the honor of recommending those students who have satisfied all of the requirements for the Master of Professional, sorry, for the Master of Arts, correct? Uh, <laughs> President Hoy. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So we we'll wait for two members to return to their seats and then. Great. Will the candidate for Master of Arts please rise? It's again, it's, again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can cheer again. Okay. By virtue, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts with all the rights and privileges appointing to this honorable degree. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll next present the candidates for the degree of Master of Professional Studies. Will the candidates for the <laughs> Will the candidates for the Master of Professional Studies in the Business of Art and Design please come forward? Oh. 
Hello, my name is Dr. Nikita Dole, and I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Student Success in the Open Studies Unit. I'm excited to congratulate you on earning your Master's in Professional Studies in the Business of Art and Design. It has been exciting to watch you build your expertise in learning how to assess and improve your branding and marketing skills during the residency challenge. And even more exciting to see you take and apply those lessons as you continue to develop as entrepreneurs and business professionals. I saw further evidence of your excellence during your capstone presentations, whether you are launching an event planning business, helping people form authentic connections around the dinner table, sharing your expertise as an artist with the next generation of students, or making and selling something beautiful with the rest of the world. I'm excited to see where your talents and lessons learned during your time in the master's program take you. Congrats again. Ian Wilson. Sarah Christine Adams. Arpi Emmy Shikoyan. Chantel Nicole Rodriguez. Annabelle Iceboro. James E. O'Leary, BFA 2020. <laughs> Tiffany Lynn Ricks. <laughs> Brittany Collins. <laughs> Deborah K. Larcher. Congratulations. Sarah Ann Fisher. Elise Inferreira. Ryan James Wilson. Ariana Parrish. Raquel Renee Lockett Finch. Angel Monique Buckins. Will the candidates for the Master of Professional Studies in Data Analytics and Visualization please come forward? My name is Ashley Lavoda, and I'm the Director of Curriculum Design and Development within the Open Studies Academic Unit. It is my pleasure to congratulate the incredibly talented 2022 graduates from the Masters of Professional Studies in Data Analytics and Visualization program. We live in a world full of data, but if we're unable to interpret and gain meaning from it, we'll never unlock its potential to drive change in our world. We have seen through your capstone project presentations the tremendous variety of backgrounds, interests, and areas of expertise represented in this cohort. And we are truly, truly fortunate that you are all the future of data communications and information storytelling. We are so, so proud of each and every one of you, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish in your future endeavors as you continue to learn and grow as data visualizers. Again, congratulations. Jimena Guerrero Alarcón. Casey Corbett, class of 2020. 
Jennifer Lynn Knotts, Class of 2021. Angie K. Elkins. Allison M. Ballin. Alex Sow. Rob Owandasan. Daniel Mead. Oliver Henry Roth. Mm -hmm. Melissa Malgi. Mm -hmm. Chelsea Lauren Feruzzi Keeney. Mm -hmm. Harrison John Weddell. Will the candidates for the Master of Professional Studies in UX Design please come forward? Hello, my name is Victoria Hunt and I am the Instructional Technologist in Open Studies. I'm incredibly excited to congratulate the graduates of the Masters of Professional Studies and the User Experience Design Program. It has been extremely rewarding to see the talent, perseverance, and creativity demonstrated in this unique group of individuals. You have mastered analytical problem solving and design thinking, explored the intersection of art and technology, and most importantly, learned to recognize and accept the importance of a good pivot. As you continue to fulfill your professional aspirations, I hope you take these skills with you and continue to be the epitome of innovation and ingenuity. Be sure to lean into different viewpoints, rely on your creative techniques, and explore with a critical mind. Words cannot express how proud Micah is to have a hand in the formation of so many designers who are going out to ease users' interactions with the world around them. So congratulations again, and continue to make us proud. James Edward Spann. Oluwakonian Sola Babatunde, Class of 2021. Deontay Brown, Class of 2020. Mary Catherine Marikis. Jennifer Renee Stanton. Sean Widra. Lisa Michelle Wilson. Jamil Johnson. Michaela Adams. <laughs> Alfredo Bailon Milner Caps. <laughs> Jailene Jackson. Congratulations. Octavia Janelle Ashton. Carlton Robert Anderson. Chris Nakahodo. Valeria Santiago. Kendall Smith.
Denisha Nicola Calderon. Hassan Ahmad. <laughs> Oliver Elijah Wood. <laughs> Mohini Agarwal, class of 2020. <laughs> Douglas Puchetti. Class of 2020. Andrea Victoria Andrickson. Jeremy Goodwin, Class of 2020. Elisa Ortola, class of 2020. Tara Trujillo Smith, class of 2020. Jessica Cox, class of 2020. Leslie McMullen, class of 2020. Julianne Marie Simpson Ward. Amanda Danielle Byrne. Laura Ray Wood. Nicole Mingle. <laughs> Megan Crouch. <laughs> Rebecca Garrison. <laughs> Taylor Stoiber. Gabby Mena Pacheco. Samantha Paez. Richard Chiu. Xiao Zhao Zhang. Andrea Kassar. <laughs> Laura Estefania de Luna Vega. <laughs> Catherine Della Eastham. <laughs> Hi. Danielle Moore. George A. Ramirez. Charlie Bradley III. Tammy Buckman. Francisco Becerra. Laura Kowalczyk. Kate Goldcamp. Lillian Boot. Isabel Sun. Kimberly De Silva.
Annie Wynn. Cassandra Padilla. Alexis Leitner Cohen. Imani Davis. Abigail Mackenzie Umflet. Cynthia Carol Lackey. Rachel Lafoon. And Arve McCreary. Provost Holmes, this completes the presentation of candidates for the Masters of Professional Studies. President Hoy, I have the honor of recommending those students who have satisfied all of the requirements for the Master of Professional Studies. Will the candidates please rise? By virtue, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Professional Studies with all of the rights and privileges appertaining to this honorable degree. Congratulations. Please join me in congratulating. Normally, this would conclude the conferral degrees at this ceremony, but we have special circumstances this year, happy special circumstances. We have a, some students here today have just had their master's degrees conferred upon them, but they've also earned their Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from MICA in 2020 and 2021. Will those students who earned BFA from, the, from MICA in the past two years please stand? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you, yes. So, right, yeah. okay. we are going to, we're going to make it up to you for the in-person conferral of your Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. So stay here for a second, keep standing here. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to this honorable degree. Congratulations again. And again, class of 2020 and class of 2021 members, thank you so much uh, for returning uh, to partake in this celebration with us. Will all of the newly conferred degree gr uh, graduates please rise now and turn to face the audience. It is now time for our graduates to acknowledge and thank those special people who have given them support and encouragement and who have enabled them to reach this important milestone. Will the graduating class please applaud the parents, family, friends, staff and faculty who have made this moment possible for you. Thank you. Please be seated. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Timo Kusme, a Leroy E. Hofberger School of Painting MFA graduate from the class of 2020, to provide some words on behalf of the classes of 2020 and 2021. Timo? Thanks, Sammy. Hi. Twelve years ago today, well, not today, twelve years ago this month, at my, at my undergraduate commencement, Patti Smith was the speaker. 
And holy crap, was she pretty amazing. I mean, she still is pretty amazing. And she per performed some of her songs, she talked about how she had been up all night, and she gave a speech that was entirely about dental hygiene. <laughs> it, it was an analogy. Um, but I don't remember any other speaker that night or what they said. Uh, but I still remember Patty. I'm unfortunately not Patty Smith. I mean, I wish I was, and I'm sure you wish I was Patty Smith. But I still aim to plant a little seed, a little lasting seed, like she did. But rather than using, well, teeth to, to do so like she did, I'll be using eyes. And rather than, use, rather than crafting playful and dubious analogies, I'll be cutting straight to the truth. Now I see a, little, a couple of you tensing up at that word, but that's, that's okay. Um, because there is a saying we will use to till the ground for that seed. Okay, maybe a little wordplay, but the saying is, relax your shoulders and unclench your jaw. Try it. See that? Doesn't that feel good? There was a nice like, wave of ease that swept across the room. We are practicing this because this was the toughest speech I've written to date, but it had to be. Its title states, don't look away. In 2020, fellow graduate Priyanka Kumar and I were selected to give the commencement speech for our graduating class. The world was about to enter its second uptick of the COVID-19 pandemic, but our focus was on the Black Lives Matter protests erupting from the murder of George Floyd by Minnesota police officer Derek Chauvin. The country was rightfully enraged by the video of Chauvin kneeling on Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. It was a video that asked you to witness truth. It once again wrenched anger, dread, confusion, despair, and many more emotions from within our chests and onto our palates. Priyanka and I knew we had to in innovate an age-old commencement tradition and instead hosted a pass the mic with many members of our graduate community to share their experience during the height of the ceremony. It was a call to action that was very much needed at the time. The following year, the commencement speeches were optimistic, a light during a dark time. Now, although COVID rates are down-ish and the political deck has been reshuffled, the world is still facing some of its darkest challenges yet. On February 24th, 2022, Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. On February 25th, a video posted online of a Russian plane over Hostomel, Ukraine, firing a missile into the apartment building that the video was being taken from. Easily heard over the ensuing chaos was the screaming of a young child. In the comments below the video, someone said, don't turn on the sound, you can hear children screaming. The reply to that comment started with the poignant, don't mute it, don't look away, this is what war is like. It is a sentiment that echoes through so many realities that our world faces, including the video of George Floyd. Don't look away, this is what racism in our country looks like. Relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw. This is a sentiment that may be difficult to swallow, but it's so important for our future. Don't look away. Witnessing these truths bypasses the logic centers of the brain and are felt with our body. They are truly affecting. As artists and designers, we are given a special gift, the Rosetta Stone of that affect the material languages of our medium. Good art contains the ability to bypass logic and communicate through pure affect. I would argue that it is every single one of our responsibilities to not look away when we bear witness to the world's hard truths. This comes with two important conditions. This does not apply if you are someone directly affected by that truth. You already live that reality. That truth is your life. When I talk with my students at MICA about living these realities, they say they are tired, tired of being the ones prompted to direct change. It is the responsibility of the rest of the world, the rest of us, to witness, learn, and create real actionable discourse and change. 
Additionally, I'm not up here telling you to dive through the depths of the news every minute of every day, trying to absorb the entire continuum of the world's tragedy ad nauseum. For to process the entire world's tragedy or suffering at once would decimate the strongest of souls. Instead, keep your eyes open and alert, for even if the surface level, level media isn't showcasing it, it's still happening. And even when you are presented with the tough truths of the world, again, don't look away, just relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw, and don't look away. A Buddhist teacher once taught me that when opening yourself up to the full emotion of another's pain to prevent collapsing back in on yourself and closing up again, you should open your chest, take in the room around you, and this will keep you grounded and receptive to the truths that they are going to tell you. As artists, this is our responsibility, to open ourselves to these truths, to open ourselves to the affect, to understand the world through our bodies, not just our minds. Now, masters of our craft, we have honed a direct channel from our bodies into our mediums. We have the rare ability to translate these truths through sensation rather than logic, which gets bottlenecked up in politics and apathy and ignorance. For real progress to happen on all scales, we can use this to achieve true empathy. We artists are the ones to initiate this understanding through the universal language of the truth itself. So when you either receive transmissions about or open the hatch of your bubble to connect with the truths of the world and find yourself face to face with the Uyghur genocide, famine and war in Yemen, pollinator extinction, coral bleaching, anti-women's health rights leg leg legislation, microplastics in the food chain, anti-trans affirming child health legislation, seemingly unending hate crimes in our country, Buffalo for example, Water, water privatization, terminator seeds, the systemic segregation of Baltimore, anti-repair laws, or the sexual assault of women and children by Russian soldiers in Ukraine, just remember, please don't, don't look away. For we can open the world to the path actually through the pain, through the anger, through the grief, rather than orbiting around it and never truly getting to its core. So one more time, could everybody please relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw, take a deep breath, and be prepared to not look away. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As I have been alumni for at least two years and now part of the faculty at MICA, I have a great, truly great honor of introducing Joyce Scott, who will provide an alumni welcome virtually. Joyce Scott has been a beloved member of the MICA family for over 40 years. She graduated MICA in 1970 and earned an honorary degree in 2018. In 2016, a MacArthur Foundation Fellow, also known as the Genius Grant, Joyce has been part of the MICA alumna, educator, mentor, and role model. She has a message for those of us who walked across the stage today. Hi, everybody. I'm Joyce J. Scott. Congratulations, everyone. On behalf of the college, I am honored to be the very first person to formally recognize all of you as the newest members of MICA's Alumni Association. My MICA degree, the same one that you just received, has enabled me to have a worthwhile, beautiful, long career as a professional artist. My wish for each of you is that your skill, creativity, talent, and education enable you to have the same good fortune. I mean, you work for it, why not? 
As you know, the world is a little nutty right about now. But here's the thing. It's your world. This is your life. You get to decide what to do with it, how to do it, and the world needs artists and designers more than ever. You create everything. This is usually the time when someone tells you what to do. Instead, I'm going to tell you what not to do. Don't be quiet. Don't run away from things that scare you. Don't let anybody stop you. This is your world. This is your life. Do it from your heart. Don't pass up opportunities because they might be scary or you don't feel you're the one. These opportunities may help others who come after you. Most importantly, don't lose touch with your family, your friends, and your community, your fellow graduates, who are sitting right next to you right now. Because more than anything, those connections are going to support, energize, and inspire you in the years to come. They're your MICA family. Once again, welcome to MICA's worldwide family of dreamers and doers. Now, President, Hoy may introduce me as Dr. Scott, but if I ever see you on the campus, you can call me Auntie Joyce or Miss Joyce if you're nasty. Thank you so much to Joyce Scott for that amazing video. I want to take a second, say a quick hi to my mom, who's watching this on Zoom, and introduce myself as Julia Salavsky, who will be your charge speaker for tonight. Don't worry, hopefully my speech isn't trying to re-traumatize you. One or two years ago, you sat somewhere and decided, I'm gonna go to grad school. Which, sure, is what every micrograduate has done at some point. The difference is that you sat there and chose to apply to a school in the midst of a pandemic. Not like two years in the midst, where we understood masks, but most of us were knee deep in sewing machines, making masks out of t-shirts. Not even like six months in the midst. A lot of us were in open by Easter midst when we clicked submit. Two months later, you experienced the largest global civil rights movement in history. And then you said, huh, I think I want to go to grad school. S Many of us even got an email in August saying that we would be going online. And we still somehow said, I want to go to grad school. And you did. You went and you are here. Sitting before me is the only graduating class that will ever say they applied when they didn't even have a vaccine. The only class that probably didn't know what an Omiron, onomatopoeia, panorama, what was happening in this Rona. The only class to choose education and school communities as their space for continued learning in an unpredictable world. You are the defining class of what it means to trust. To trust in yourself, to trust in your peers, to trust in your future. Trusting in our peers. When I came to the school, I decided to apply myself to some of the extracurricular activities. I got to peek behind the closed doors of the institution and see the true power that rests in the hands of a student. I witnessed administration and students in hot topic discussions paving the way for how we can reevaluate the functions and expectations of institutional spaces. I saw students organize for disability and accessibility, standing up against racism and discrimination, speaking out for the safety of our peers in the six-foot world. A class that literally bears the acts of resilience, resistance, trust, strength, collaboration in our very souls. 
resilience and trust. Let's really take a second and recognize the resilience and trust that every person in this class holds. The trust that you would move or enter a new space and that you would find a space for yourself in higher education. It's not an easy space to navigate. It's a privileged space to navigate. The fact that you even trusted that this world somehow wouldn't fall apart in the middle of your schooling. I mean, there were literally murder hornets. And we said, I'm gonna go to grad school. You came to a school that had just opened a Pandora's box of issues through SVA's open letter. The students that came before us laid the groundwork for the change enacted. They published an open letter demanding changes to the institution, changes that we have all worked hard to implement, changes that many of you worked to ensure didn't drop into the shadows. You came to a school that you were ready to make better. You were ready to change it and change with it. You rallied when it came to our faculty and staff's rights and employment. You rallied when they tried to take away masks. You rallied to better your community. You rallied because you cared for your community. And that community was at MICA. You cared for our futures and the futures of the generations to come across this stage. You held the trust that you would come to school and find at least one peer to connect with. When I graduated my undergraduate institution in 2019, I swore against going to grad school. I mean, my favorite book was Tell Them I Said No. If you know, you know. I remembered my favorite professor making a joke about the concept of an MFA. Yet somehow, I am here. Somehow, I held a trust that I could do this. And I could do this amongst the peers that I stand before today. I said, I'm gonna go to grad school. We said, let's trust. You continued to hold the trust that you would be able to lean on someone and someone on you. The trust that even though most of us don't know what we're doing, that we would somehow fake it till we make it and figure it out. Well, we sure as hell made it. So again, you didn't just choose to go to grad school. You chose higher education in a time where the world quite literally was burning around us. You chose to take the risks on new beginnings and new connections. You chose this in the most unprecedented time in history. In a time when connections were defined by staring through a Zoom screen, when a hug was still boosters away, this graduating class either truly embodies the motto of fuck it, <laughs> or just knows so much that they would find community in a time of hardship and that that community would be found in school. It is an honor today for me to stand amongst peers who said they didn't like the playbook, so they made their own rules. To know that this group of people, as nervous as we are, can count on the fact that we will find our communities in our next journey. That even if we have not found ourselves here, the changes we hold are within us and will move us through our future endeavors. If we can believe in ourselves that much during just an application process, if we can believe in ourselves that much when we were stuck through screen learning, when some of you even chose to do screen learning, when we were scrambling through thesis after thesis, and when we somehow pulled it together to cross this stage, then what else can you do? Thank you. Thank you, Timo. Thank you, Julia. And thank you, Auntie Joyce, on screen before, uh, for these um, stirring remarks that help us conclude this um, commencement ceremony for
classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Three classes, as Julia said, unlike any that came before and unlike any that will go forward. So please join me in congratulating Ken to these um, amazing, amazing graduates. Yes. Before closing, I would like to invite everyone to the reception following these exercises in Cohen Plaza in front of the Brown Center. Will the marshals now please take up their standards? Will the graduates and guests please remain at their seat until recession has been completed? The 173rd MICA Master's Commencement is hereby adjourned. Thank you so much for attending.
Church, CHD? CHO. Okay. CHO, thank you. Okay, Rail, something that is. And then we have Fernando. Okay, you're yellow. graduators and supporters. My name is Evan Jensen, and if you don't know me, I have been the radio club president for two years. I'm a photography major, and I am the annoying bike rider who cuts off cars on traffic on Mount Royal. Today, on this day of commencement, I have been given the honor
afternoon. For many years, members of the MICA community have read various versions of land acknowledgments. For the past year, MICA has been opening its meetings with a preliminary campus-wide land acknowledgment, while a cross-constituent committee worked and collaborated with members of our community and the Baltimore American Indian Center, with whom we will continue to collaborate. We also reviewed our acknowledgement by a elder of the, the, the Scataway uh, community. Today at our commencement, we unveil our new campus land acknowledgement. We began this event by acknowledging with humility and regret that wherever you live and work in North America, you occupy the traditional lands of native peoples against their will. The lands where the Maryland Institute College of Art is situated are the traditional ancestral lands of the Piscataway and the Susquehannock indigenous peoples. We recognize that the original tribes have been joined through the northern migration by the Lumbee and the Cherokee. We recognize the model they provide for wisdom and caring communities based on mutual respect, reciprocity, and reverence for the land water, and all relations. We too honor Mother Earth from which all life springs, worthy of our caring stewardship. We also acknowledge the people, enslaved and exploited, who did and do work on this land, enabling us to live. We recognize that our current systems are often unjust, that the comfort of many still rests upon the suffering of others. Here at MICA, we strive to honor the ancestors, to work equitably and honorably towards social justice with their descendants, and to use our talents and resources to work to mitigate past and present injustices. Thank you. Good morning, graduators and supporters. Thank you, thank you. My name is Evan Jensen, and if you don't know me, <laughs> if you don't know me, I have been the radio club president for two years. I am a photography major, shout out photography. And uh, I'm the annoying biker who cuts off cars on Mount Royal. Um, Today, on this day of commencement, I have been given the honor to welcome you to this moment. You know, I'm very glad that we got to do a land acknowledgement. Recognizing where we are and our history is very important. As we recognize the land that we're on, I'd like us to recognize the time that we're in. Graduating college is no small feat in normal circumstances. Four years after the regular 12, insane. But, as we all know, these are not normal circumstances. If you've been living under a rock for the last two years and two months, I would be very jealous. But, for those of you who are not, we know the difficulty of moving our lifestyles, work, and social interactions online. We, ac we accommodate to do what we must, but the sacrifice of our practice is gigantic. From sculptors who couldn't come into a studio for any of their sculpting, to animators who need a voice or equipment in Brown Building, or a group of people to keep them sane. As a photographer who mainly photographs people, you know, hanging out in large groups, my practice clearly wasn't affected that much. <laughs> uh, but people forget that going into art school is about constantly making art. Art in different mediums, they require different working styles and the pressure to do well. People forget that constantly making art is a draining and heavy process at times. The need for space to grow and breathe outside of your art is so important. It's easy to think that anyone can do art, that you just tape a banana to a wall or open up Microsoft Paint. As the critic Anton Ego said in Ratatouille, 
I have made no secret of my disdain for Chef Gusteau's famous motto, anyone can cook. But I realize only now do I truly understand what he meant. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. These are times when creation is possible. There are times when creation is possible. In the best of circumstances, a dream may pan out. But I'm very interested in the work that we create when it's not possible. In the countless things that were rendered unable in the pandemic, school would probably be at the top of my list. And despite that, there are so many of you here today. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Whether, whether with gaps in your education or with the scar of Zoom lectures, you have emerged in 2020 as victorious. 2022 is not 2020. <laughs> 2022 as victorious over your hardships. Never forget that. In a school so focused on creating and hands-on learning all the time, you learned and created in the worst of times. I find that in my worst moments, that's when I want to stop making art. But it's pushing through that taught me my purpose in life. No matter the struggle and uncertainty, document that struggle. Make art about the truth. It's easy to let self-destructive tendencies dominate your lifestyle in service of your craft. In my time here, I have seen people stay up for three days. I've seen people let go of their eating and their social interaction and their hygiene. But it all works together. I believe that giving in to despair is very convenient for those who don't want to see you succeed. You all will now have a marker of this great achievement. And as a reminder that you did not fail. No one can take it away from you. As you hear other speakers today, and as you shake Sammy Hoy's hand, and you receive your diploma, you have a legion of supporters in this room and beyond. As the amazing singer-songwriter Lord said in her new album, everybody wants the best for you, but you gotta want it for yourself. Now, as we begin the ceremonials, Know how much work you did to get here. It was a fierce battle, and it was won. You have won. And now take this day of celebration as a huge mark of your success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evan, for your wonderful welcome address, and thank you, Dr. Sherry Parks, for opening this ceremony with a land acknowledgement. Graduates, proud parents, families, honorees, and other distinguished guests, I'm Sammy Hoy. It is my great pleasure, as MICA's president, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and staff, to add my welcome to the Maryland Institute College of Arts 2022 Commencement Ceremony. I join Evan in welcoming back members of the class of 2020 and class of 2021 who missed an in-person commencement due to the pandemic. We are so pleased that you and your guests can return to partake in today's celebration with the class of 2022. Let's give our class of 2021 and 2020 a great Dear graduates, congratulations. Your graduation is a genuine occasion for celebration, a celebration of your successful completion of very rigorous studies at MICA, and a celebration of the start of your next chapter. Today is a joyful day for you and your loved ones. And, but as so well put by Evan, you know and we know the challenges, sweat, tears, sacrifice, and resilience it has taken for you to reach this momentous graduation milestone in a pandemic. You have persevered individually and you have supported each other as a community. 
Please savor the special sweetness of your achievement as represented by your graduation. It is a triumph over unprecedented challenges, and our cheers for you are louder out of admiration. Our great hope in you is amplified by the extraordinary times we live in. It is crystal clear that there is no status quo to return to in a COVID-disrupted world. We count on your innovation for new thinking, new solution, new spaces for action, and new ways to empower yourselves and others. We need your human-centered and compassionate vision and work that we have witnessed again and again with you here at MICA. The ongoing pandemic with all the issues and possibilities that it has exposed, as well as the essential fight for democracy and justice, are just some critical factors that will inform your opportunities, your challenges, and your charge as artists, designers, educators, and as agents for positive change. Dear graduates, I hope the fact that your studies at MICA have been marked by historic events and by the call for transformative change inspires you to boldly step up to help shape a better reality for us all. As creative thinkers, makers, and scholars, your capacity for cultural action, artistic intervention, and design thinking make you a special kind of leaders and catalysts for change. In addition, our world needs to heal, to celebrate, and to get some joy back in our lives. And what can be more joyful and infectious than the vibrant art and design that you create. At MICA, we have infused, you have infused the college with talent, vibrancy, passion, ideas, and a sense of renewal. Now is your time to do the same for our society and for the world at large. On behalf of the board and staff, but especially on behalf of your faculty, I want to let you know that it has been a privilege and a, and a pleasure to have you here at MICA and in the city of Baltimore. We are extremely proud that you'll be representing the college as alumni. Let me conclude by offering you a short poem by Gwendolyn Brooks that speaks powerfully and eloquently about the importance of living and acting with conviction, of our commitment to forward movement, and of the peace we can have by being in a moment and doing our best in the moment. For those who don't know the poem, the title is Speech to the Young, speech to the progress toward. Here it goes. Say to them, say to the downkeepers, the sun slappers, the self soilers, the harmony hushers, even if you're not ready for day, it cannot always be night. You will be right, for that is the hard home run. Live not for the battles won, live not for the end of the song, live in the along. Dear graduates, you have our very, very best wishes as you explore your paths and fulfill those great possibilities that are now yours to claim. Congratulations again. We have now come to a special portion of ceremony. It is a custom at MICA to present the honorary doctorates each year to individuals who have made remarkable contributions to the arts and to society, and whose achievements represent the standards of excellence to which Maryland Institute College of Art is committed. This year, we have three very special honorees who will also provide remarks to our candidates for graduation. Our first honorary degree recipient is the Honorable Maggie McIntosh. I would like to call forward Diane Kunko, a candidate for the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in General Fine Arts, to read the citation for Delegate Maggie McIntosh. Thank you. Delegate Maggie McIntosh, you are the embodiment of transformational leadership, one of the most consequential legislators to ever call Baltimore City home. Your unwavering dedication to human rights, education, and the environment throughout your storied career is both significant and inspiring. You are such a force in the city and state that it's hard to believe that you have not lived here in your entire life. But 
Armed with a bachelor's degree in arts and education from, from Wichita State University, you moved from your native Kansas to Maryland after graduation and began teaching in a Baltimore City middle school. You would go on to teach at Catonsville Community College, earn your Master of Science degree from the John Hopkins University, and spend nine years with the City of Baltimore's Commission on Aging and Retirement Education. Along the way, you became heavily involved in, a, in Democratic campaign, campaigns and was elected to and elected as a delegate to both the 1980 and 2008 Democratic National Conventions. In 1992, when while working on as an aide to U.S. Senate Barbara uh, Mikulski, you were appointed to the Maryland House of Delegates to replace Delegate Ann Perkins when she accepted a teaching position in China. Two years later, you were elected to. to to a full time, to a full term representation representing the 42nd district of Baltimore City and parts of Baltimore County. When the state's redistricting efforts drastically changed the boundaries, you had won a hard fought campaign to, in the redrawn 43rd district and continued to be re elected each term. And, your, and you became a political force, claiming a number of firsts the first woman, woman to serve as House Majority Leader, the first woman to chair the House. Environmental Matters Committee, and the first woman to chair the Powerful Appropriations Committee, and the first openly LGBTQ member of the General Assembly. By the time you announced your retirement, you were considered the most important state legislator from Baltimore. Over your career, you were instrumental in the passing of key legislation. The Climate Change Act, the, and both the Blueprint for the Future and Built to Learn Act, which, in, which, in, which established major K-12 education funding in Maryland. You led the formation of the Chesapeake Bay Res Restoration Fund, helped expand health care, and was a longtime advocate for marriage equality. Among your many appointments were seats on the Fine Arts Education Advisory Plan Panel for the State Department of Education and the Task Force on Sustainable Growth and Watership, water Wastewater Management. Your honors, which number too many to name entirely, include being twice hailed as Legislator of the Year by the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and winning the Women's Law Center's Dorothy Betty Memorial Service Award for your work to expand legal rights for women. We are so proud to note that you also recently created the Maggie McIntosh School Arts Fund with the goal of providing grants to public schools in Baltimore for the expansion of arts curriculums and the purchase of art supplies. Maggie McIntosh, for your exemplary career as a legislator, community advocate, and educator, and for the lasting legacy you have left on our city and state, the Board of Trustees of the Maryland Institute College of Art hereby bestows upon you the degree Doctor of Human Letters, uh, Honoris Causa. Delegate Maggie McIntosh, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me. It is now my privilege to present to you the Honorable Maggie McIntosh to address our candidates and our guests. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank President Hoy. I want to also thank the trustees and all of you here today. This is a great honor for me. Um, I was um, actually looking forward to this day until they asked me to speak, and then I began to be a little concerned, you know, something like that. So what do you say, you know, basically, I thought to myself, uh, to the class of 2022, 21, and 20, uh, uh, at one of the finest art schools that is so internationally recognized as a leader in art and design. Um, well, President Hoy gave me an idea. He said, listen, here's a hint. Talk to them about your graduation and the commencement speech given and what it meant to you. So here it goes. I don't remember the speech. <laughs> I don't remember the speaker. 
What I do remember is that a family gathering after the commencement, it was my uncle who looked at me and he said, what the heck do you do with an art degree? <laughs> it's useless. Now, I remember that because I had just put in four years of hard work and a student teaching semester. And so I did what I intended to do with my degree. I taught middle school in Baltimore City. I loved it. I also learned another hard lesson. When urban school districts like Baltimore and so many others in the late 1980s went through budget crises, the first classes to go were art, then music. And so my teaching career in Baltimore City Schools ended. My career took a new path. I ran for office. I completed 30 years of service now to Baltimore City in the Maryland State Legislature. And I have focused my energy on supporting the arts because arts matter. Art expands our world. Art communicates in ways that no other language can. After the past two years, we know more than ever that art heals. Supporting MICA, increasing access to the arts venues across the state, focusing on support for individual artists in this pandemic and working to ensure that arts are in every public school, that's not useless. That's good work. Enough about me. What I really want to say to the class of 20, 22, 21, and 20 <laughs> is go forward and be your authentic self. Do not listen to the voices of uncles or others around you who detract. Just know who you are and live it. I will go further at the risk of making every parent in this room nervous. If you don't know your authentic self, take some time and find him or her or them. And if the journey to authenticity takes years, be patient with yourself. Just get there. Now, this is where my wife, Diane, says, tell the story about meeting Andy Warhol. <laughs> yes, as an art major, I traveled to New York, hit the club scene. Then I went up to the underground club scene and ended up at a party with Andy Warhol. OK, I told the story. <laughs> But the truth is that Diane knows that my love of art has introduced me to people, places, and travel I never dreamed. The result was art helped me find my authentic self. So let me conclude by stating that I'm counting on you. We are not living in the easiest of times. With every week, the rights of women, LGBTQ, and others, especially trans communities, are being rolled back or questioned. If math books can be censored, so can art books. I'm counting on you, graduates, to bend the art toward justice, to expand rights and expression through art. The incidence of reporting censorship in the arts is on the rise. You're going to be in a studio, a classroom, a business, or industry. Your degree that you've worked so hard for gets you in that door. But only you can keep the door open for others who follow. Again, congratulations.
Thank you, Dr. McIntosh, for your inspiring address. Will Malik Larkin, a candidate for the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Graphic Design, please come forward to read. He will come forward to read the citation for our next honorary degree recipient, Cheryl D. Holmes Miller. Ms. Miller, would you please come forward as well? It's also here. Thank you. Cheryl Miller, through your trailblazing career as a graphic designer, design decolonizing historian, and activist for minority rights, you have illuminated your field with an equitable light and served as a powerful symbol of inspiration for creatives everywhere. Your work is a testament to a key concept in the belief system at MICA, that creatives can drive mindful social action and create change that is, has a lasting impact. You are, we are proud to have you as an alumna of the college. It is our privilege to honor you today. Born in Washington, born in Washington DC to parents you met at Howard University, you grew up in a multiracial family in the historic Brooklyn neighborhood. And your days were filled, were filled with creative activity. You visited museums, became a Girl Scout, and won a number of art awards. These earliest experience, experiences, as well as your cultural heritage, shaped the designer and activist that you would later become. Another determining factor was your decision to attend art college, first attending Rhode Island School of Design, and then, after the death of your father, transferring to MICA to be closer with your mother while you complete your BFA. It was during these years that your inquiry into black marginalization in your field began. After school, you, you worked in broadcast design for 10 years, before moving to New York City to attend Pratt Institute, later the, the Theological Union Seminary. During that time, you founded the social impact firm, design firm, Cheryl D. Miller Design Inc., one of the first black-owned women firms in the country, and work of clients such as BET, Time Incorporated, and the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, and the Joint Center of Political Economic Studies. Your personal experiences as a graduate student and business owner spurred a deep examination of the black experience in the design industry, leading to your thesis essay, Black Designers Missing in Action. This highly influential work ignited a movement and opened widespread discourse on diversity's role in design. These critical conversations on equality has had a lasting impact not only on the graphic design industry, but on the creatives who work within it. And today, you're recognized worldwide for your influence and advocacy within the profession to end marginalization of bi POC designers. The countless awards you have received de sorry, uh, demonstrate the significance of your work as a designer, activist, and writer. Among these are the 2021 AIGA Award, one of the biggest distinctions in the design field. Last year, you were named Cooper Hewitt Design Visionary Award winner and honorary IBM Design Scholar. You have continued to write a number of influential articles and a memoir, and have begun to decolonize the history of your profession through a curated database, the history of black graphic design in North America, collected at both Stanford University and the Herb Lou Ballin Center, Cooper Union. You have also shared your wisdom with others as a teacher, becoming distinguished senior lecturer in design at the University of Texas Austin, the William O. Steinmetz designer at, at, in residence at MICA, and an adjunct professor at Howard University. Cheryl Miller, your impact you have had on the graphic design, graphic design profession is profound and everlasting. For your countless achievements, for awakening the social conscious for so many, and for the example you have set for young creatives at Mike and beyond, the Board of Trustees at Manchester College of Art hereby bestow upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa. Cheryl D. Holm Miller, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts. Dr. Cheryl Miller. Thank you. I now present to you Dr. Miller to address our class of 2021, 20, 2020, 20, and 2022. <laughs> It 
it is my absolute honor to be before you. I'm humbled, I'm grateful, and I'm thankful to Micah, President Hoy, the Board of Trustees, the Academy to which we serve, the Maryland Institute College of Art, community of family and friends gathered here together for this glorious occasion. It is an honor and an opportunity and a privilege to speak before you today. For this, I am genuinely thankful. And most importantly, I want to celebrate and congratulate the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022 for this victorious day, surviving as well as graduating from college this day through pandemic and living through Zoom studio. <laughs> I've been reading I believe it is The Heart the heart Lit with Fire by David Gergen. And he is challenging um, in his book that the baby boomers have to release the reins to the next generation. Class of 2022, 21, and 20, you are our next generation here now. We call them Gen Zers. They are, you are, our future in the present, right now, right here, right before us. Baby boomers don't always understand Gen Zers and the things they do. To keep up with you, I have been active on social media, except for Snapchat and TikTok. <laughs> Class of 2020, 21 and 20, you can easily find me on LinkedIn and mostly Instagram. Many of you are already my friends. I've uh, had to get used to the way you treat me though. I know that you love me, but you do some crazy things to me. You poke your mouth at me. You poke your mouth at me. And then, after you do that, you poke your fingers at me. <laughs> and then if you really like me, you stick your tongue at me. <laughs> and you make sure you take your picture with me. <laughs> then you call me names. Bro. That's not bro. That's bro. Bro. Girl. That's not girl. That's girl, like curl. And then you call me dope. I've never known myself to be a dope. But you call me dope. And then when you really love me, you say, we call you a goat. <laughs> well, it takes a goat to know a goat. Class of 2022, 20, 2021, 2020, all of you are goats. <laughs> the greatest of all time scholars. Let me tell you what it means to be a goat. G, give it all you got plus extra. You have to go one more time. Give your gift away. Just go for it. Go for what you want. O, overcome obstacles by any means necessary. Try over and over and over again, no matter how many times it takes to overcome. Overcome. Seize opportunity when you sense it's about. Defy the odds. O, A, Accept being an anomaly. It's an advantage. You're always gonna be the only one. Achieve, no need to apologize for being assertive 
or advocating for yourself. T, take risk. Take what's yours. Think out of the box. Tell the truth, and most importantly, thrive at everything you do. Take it from one goat to another. Here's my secret goat sauce. I look deeply within, and I look deeply without. I identify the one void that must be filled, and I believe with my whole heart that I'm the only one who can fill it. I discover where I can be the first one, not the only one, but I discover where I can be the first one to try to accomplish the task. Then I work endlessly and tirelessly to complete the mission impossible. I keep going until it's completed, no matter how long it takes. Stop, period, repeat. Living your life is your story. This is your charge. Living your life is your story. Living your life for others is your legacy. Leave a legacy worthy of being a GOAT, the greatest of all time, class of 2022, 21, and 20. I thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Miller, for those wonderful, wonderful remarks. And speaking of someone who does see a void and fill in first, we have our final honoree, Emily Way Rouse. I would like to call forward Victoria Cho, a candidate for the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in painting, to read the citation for Emily Way Rouse. And Ms. Rouse, please come forward as well. Emily Way Rails, you have long been devoted to making access to contemporary art more equitable, breaking ground with a unique vision through revelatory art collection, and nurturing the next generation of museum professionals and artists. Your work empowers both the people who view and make art, and serves as an example for today's young creative makers. Your journey began as an undergraduate at Wellesley, where you arrived intending to major in international relations. A modern art class taken because you had space on your schedule changed everything. You double majored in art history and Chinese studies and landed a summer internship at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York. From there, you went to the Chinese Antiquities Gallery, J.J. Lowley and Company, and the Barbara Gladstone Gallery in 2003, you established the Hudson Clearing, a nonprofit curatorial project that mounted exhibitions by emerging artists in unoccupied spaces in Lower Manhattan. The next step in your career and life was taken when you met and began working for Mitchell Rails, who would later become your husband. In collaboration with him in 2006, you co-founded Glenstone, a museum in Potomac, Maryland, which seamlessly integrates nearly 300 acres of nature with architecture and art. Housing one of the most important collections in America, Glenstone includes the works of the most renowned names in the post-war canon, alongside those of less known but equally fascinating artists. In recent years, you spearheaded an expansion that added 50,000 square feet of exhibition space to the 9,000 square feet of the original gallery. At the heart of this new addition are interlocking rooms arranged around a water court and a remade landscape with paths that wind through meadows, along a stream, and through more than 8,000 trees. You also continue to diligently add to Glenstone's collection, which now holds up to 1,300 pieces. And altogether, these works, alongside the facility's gracefully designed indoor and outdoor spaces, envelop visitors, encouraging meaningful viewing experiences and embodying one of the museum core values, that art is essential to life. 
Glenstone's other core values include the tenets that meaningful encounters begin with direct engagement, that you embrace diverse perspectives, and that you think in the long term. These ideals can be seen in the initiatives you've spearheaded. The Emerging Professionals Program, for example, provides aspiring curators with a unique two-year professional development opportunity as they explore a career in the arts. While Glenstone's partnership with Montgomery County Public Schools has welcomed more than 10,000 students to its grounds since its inception, and your tenure on the Board of Foundation for Contemporary Arts, as well as your time spent on committees for the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and the Museum of Modern Art in New York, underscore your contributions to your field. Emily Way Rails, for your purposeful life and projects, and for your remarkable commitment to making contemporary art accessible and meaningful to everyone, Maryland Institute College of Art hereby bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. Victoria. Let's take a picture together. Oh, yeah. that yeah. was so yeah. sweet. Yeah, take a picture together, please. We can make a few of you after this. Yes, thank you. Emily Way Rails, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree, or the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts. Everyone, it is now my privilege to present to you Doctor Rails, who will provide remarks to our graduates and our guests. I'd rather be painting. <laughs> greetings, everyone. Greetings to President Hoy, to the faculty, staff, trustees of MICA. Congratulations to my fellow honorees. It is such a pleasure to be here with all of you today to celebrate you, the class of 2022, 21, and 2020. Art has shaped me into who I am today. For as long as I can remember, I have been an omnivorous learner. The liberal arts college I attended offered an environment perfectly suited to my nonlinear pursuit of knowledge, and it really stoked my curiosity. During my first year, I took an art history course completely by chance, and it blew my mind. It was love at first slide. <laughs> By graduation day, I had systematically plotted out the route to becoming an art historian. And it was on a mental roadmap in my head, and it had two key checkpoints. Graduate school for a master's degree, followed by another stint to get a PhD. Well, you know what they say about best laid plans. It didn't take long before my career took me on a detour. Three years out of college, I was working at an art gallery and actually getting to know the artists that I studied in my studio class so many years before. And then I teamed up with a friend and I started a nonprofit, mounted exhibitions in lower Manhattan in these vacant commercial spaces. It was fantastic. I maxed out my credit card multiple times doing it. <laughs> During this invigorating time, I discovered what would become my lifelong passion, building frameworks that enable artists to achieve their visions and then sharing their work with the public so that many more can be transformed by the power of their art. Fast forward 12 years. I'm now involved in a much bigger endeavor, creating a museum with my husband, Mitch. 
As Glenstone Museum's founding director and chief curator, I started to develop exhibitions and programming. I set policies. I built a team from the ground up. I'm not gonna lie. I wrestled with some serious imposter syndrome. You see, after more than a decade of gallery and curatorial work, I had decided to forego grad school because working with direct, directly with artists was just so exhilarating and it was an education unto itself. The urgency to earn more diplomas had just faded away. Yet doubts about whether I was up to the task of building and leading an institution persisted. Until I remembered all the times I watched artists figure out problems through research, trial and error, and practice, and the force of their boundless imaginations. The artistic process is a marvelously iterative and intuitive way of making sense of the world that requires rigor, resourcefulness, and critical thinking. And it gave me the idea to adopt what I'll call the artist's mindset whenever I faced a particularly daunting challenge. So this conceptualization gave me the confidence boost I needed to get through my self-doubt. I've also continued to cultivate the artist's mindset at Glenstone. I created the Emerging Professionals Program, especially for recent college graduates like you, to nurture young talent entering the museum field. Every spring, we recruit a cohort of a dozen EPs, as we affectionately call them, to work as guides to engage with our visitors. In addition, EPs attend workshops, they uh, hone their presentation skills, and they shadow our staff while gaining exposure to areas like conservation, registration, archives, sustainable horticulture, and exhibition design. At the time I established the program, nothing like it existed in the field. Without knowing it, I was practicing a MICA core tenet, inventing through thoughtful disruption. To the classes of 2022, 2021, and 2020, know that your art education has infused you with powerful attributes and that you too will be a thoughtful disruptor. You each have your own journey to chart. It won't be the same as mine. It won't be the same as your studio mates or the one of the person sitting next to you will follow. I'll leave you with just one of the greatest lessons that art has taught me. Work and play can be one and the same. It is for me. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tiffany Holmes, and I'm the Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost here at MICA. I am here to introduce our student speaker, but before then, I need to acknowledge some very important members of our faculty who are retiring this year. As you know, faculty are the heart and soul of MICA. We have three extraordinary teachers whom we need to celebrate here. We would like to thank Catherine Barrent from the First Year Experience Program, Alan Moore from Film and Video, and Susan Waters Eller from GFA for their contributions to the MICA community. Catherine, Alan, and Susan, we wish you so well as you start your new chapters. You will be deeply missed and always remembered. 
It is now my great honor to introduce Fernando Osuna, this year's undergraduate commencement <laughs> student speaker. Fernando was born in Mexico City, Mexico, and moved to the United States with his family at the age of 10. He currently lives in Texas with his mom, dad, and their dog, Tula. He will be graduating MICA with a BFA in illustration with a focus in bookmaking. Fernando plans to complete his master's in illustration at the Falmouth School of Art in England this coming fall. <laughs> Woo! One day he hopes to write and publish his own picture books. Please join me in welcoming Fernando to the podium. When I was very young, my parents told me that one day I'd grow up, that my hands would get big and my feet would outgrow my shoes, that one day I'd go far, yet I'd always find my way back, that there were no wrong paths in life, simply the one you were on. This month, will mark the 10th year since my family and I arrived in the States. Seeing both of my parents here today reminds me how far we've come and just how much things have changed. <laughs> every year, every challenge, every setback, we faced together. I am who I am because of the people that raised me. I stand here today because of the two people who believed in me most. The two people who taught me that family is made up of those who love and support you most. Memory is a strange thing. When I think back on my first days here, the only things I truly remember are the nerves I felt and just how quickly they left. I don't think I knew it at the time, but a lot of very big and meaningful things were about to happen. From the many professors and mentors who helped me find a voice, to the incredibly wonderful people I met along the way. There truly are not enough words to express my gratitude. It's a thing easily taken for granted, yet it's the people we choose to grow with that end up influencing us most. And as I look around, I see each one of you. A testament to the many great joys we experienced, the friendships and bonds that will linger long after we depart. At times, it seemed impossible to get here, as if our long days would not reach an end. Many of us lost things we thought we'd never have to be without. Yet here we are, by the kindness of others and the grit in our character, we pulled through. As we prepare to take on a new path, and outgrow the very shoes we've had on, all that I can say is to keep an open mind, to not lose time on daily trivialities or dwell on petty details, to live broadly, and to remember that at the end of the day, all we can do is show up and give it our best, and to never forget that we are each other's community. Here's hoping I get the pleasure of seeing each of you down the road. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Fernando. I can easily imagine how proud your parents must be in the audience, and as are the parents and families of all our graduates as well. But thank you so very, very much. It is my honor now to present to you Catherine Zeke Takada, MICA trustee and MICA parent, who will present some special honors. Current board chair Stuart Clark cannot join us today due to health recovery, but he sends his best and warmest congratulations to all for this very special occasion. Good afternoon. Today I have the privilege of honoring special members of the MICA community and the MICA faculty. MICA is an exceptional educational institution because of the tireless contributions of all our faculty members and the MICA community. Last night at an award ceremony in her honor, Ashley Minner was bestowed with MICA's highest alumni award, the Alumni Medal. Ashley's dedication to community art and advocacy for the recognition of the American Indian cultural legacy exemplify some of the college's most fundamental beliefs, that creativity can drive mindful action and artists can be a transformational force in society. A member of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina, Ashley was raised in Baltimore where a significant population of Lumbee Indians have called home for over half a century. Ashley chose to attend MICA to pursue a BFA and then continue to study in MICA's then newly launched Masters in Community Arts, working with the people in her community for her thesis. Ashley was unable to join us today, but please join me in congratulating Ashley in absentia for all her accomplishments, including exemplifying cultural leadership and social commitment. Ashley is a powerful example of how artists and their art can elevate society. In recognition for all that she has achieved, Maryland Institute College of Art is proud to bestow on her the Alumni Medal for 2022. The MICA faculty are artists, designers, scholars, and teachers who are deeply committed to their students and to the quality of the MICA educational experience across 20 undergraduate programs. I want to take this moment to invite these faculty members to stand and be recognized by our graduating students and their families and guests. I now have the distinct pleasure to recognize our exceptional faculty with the Trustee Fellowship for Excellence in Teaching Awards. These faculty award recipients were selected by the students and trustees for their exceptional commitment and enthusiasm and selfless devotion to our students and the college. Regina DeLuise has been a tireless contributor to the Department of Photography, serving our students with excellence for over 20 years. In particular, as the senior thesis coordinator, she has nurtured countless senior thesis projects. We constantly hear from students and alumni how supported, seen, and loved they feel by her guidance. During her time in the chair role, she worked with advancement to set into motion our collaboration with Aperture Foundation. 
one of the most important contemporary photography publishers. As a result of her labor, Micah has a donor that underwrites workshops with Aperture artists, visits from the art Aperture staff, and a paid summer internship for a student. One of Regina's students had this to say about her, quote, Regina has been there for me every step of the way and has helped guide me toward more authentic art making. She is accepting, encouraging, and critical when necessary. Regina has been a big influence on how I approach art and art life, unquote. Our next honoree, Fan Huang, is a faculty member <laughs> characterized by high energy, utilized in focused support of student learning. Over the past year, she has worked with seniors in the drawing, general fine arts, and painting senior thesis program, helping them to return to the campus creative community and prepare their thesis work for life beyond MICA. That group of students described her as understanding, helpful, inspiring, providing great support and feedback. Fan is very supportive of her students. One student told us, quote, she will always help you grow. She has become almost like a mentor to me in teaching me how the fabrication side of art functions. Fan is always there for help and has been a major reason why I had a good experience at MICA." Unquote. In previous years, Fawn has taught in graduate studies, professional practices for visual artists for undergraduate fine arts students, and introduced students to tertiary art and design at MICA as an FYE faculty member teaching forum. Will Regina DeLuise and Fang Huang please come forward? Join me in honoring these extraordinary members of the MICA community. Good afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Michael Patterson. I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, and it's an honor to be here with you. It is my pleasure to honor our students who have graduated with special distinctions, merits, and awards. You will notice that some of the graduates are wearing different colored cords as part of their regalia today. These cords denote various honors and are described in the back of your program. I would like to highlight three cords that signify academic achievements. Seniors who graduate with a grade point average of 3.7 and above earn cum laude, with distinction, and they wear a green cord. Graduates with a GPA of 3.8 and above merit magna cum laude, with great distinction, and they wear a red cord. Students who have a GPA of 3.9 or above graduate summa cum laude, with highest distinction, and they wear the gold-colored cords. Other cords include students who have been recognized for their outstanding leadership and involvement in the MICA community, and they wear bright blue honor cords. International students are recognized with white cords. Current and former members of the United States military wear blue and gold cords. I also have the pleasure of pointing out the awards, scholarships, departmental honors, and achievements of our amazing graduates. As you review our commencement program, you will note that we have a number of incredible graduates who have earned awards of distinction. Will the students that have received commencement awards please stand to be recognized by your families, faculty, and peers?
I now have the pleasure to ask Danielle Kunkel back to the podium to present the Distinguished Service to Students Award. The recipient of MICA's 2022 Distinguished Service to Students Award is a helpful, thoughtful, and compassionate advocate for students. Louise Cracknell, Assistant Director of Student Development, works tirelessly with students to navigate every imaginable imaginable type of problem, from academic difficulties to significant medical issues and everything in between. Lisa's work directly impacts hundreds of students each every year, and she deserves a vital resource helping students persist at MICA and reach this mom moment of graduation. Because of her obvious commitment, Luis is respected by students, faculty, and staff alike. I am honored to present this award to Luis Cracknell. Are you ready? At this time, at this time, we've come to the portion of the program you've been all been waiting for, the awarding of the Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees. <laughs> along with the faculty, we're extremely proud of this year's graduates, along with our graduates who have joined us from the class of 2020 and 2021. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you see the work of the class of 2022 on display throughout the campus. The wristbands distributed today for this event will get you into the campus spaces to see the exhibitions. As you enjoy the artwork, you will understand and share the pride. We feel that these talented artists and designers, and also for a class of 2020 and 2021, I believe you can still see the archival online exhibitions of their remarkable artwork at the MICA website as well. At this moment, I invite Provost Holmes, Dean Patterson, and Director of Academic Advising, Ken Dapong, please come forward for the conferral of degrees. Will the Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates in the animation, animation and humanistic studies, architectural design, Art History, Theory and Criticism, Ceramics and Drawing, please come forward as instructed by the usher. Hang on, hang on. Will Steve Benili, Chair of Animation, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez, Assistant Chair of Humanistic Studies, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Congratulations, Class of 2022. We are so very proud of what you've accomplished in your time here at MICA, and we're so excited to see what you'll accomplish in the future, both great and small. To all the animation majors, it's been a pleasure. You've persevered with grace through two extraordinarily unusual years. We wish you the very best. We hope you'll stay in touch and go forth. Be excellent. Congratulations. Lucas Lanza. Madison Elizabeth Cherry. <laughs> Seth Johnson III. <laughs> Sydney Warren. <laughs> Declan McKenna.
Masa Kuno Lewis. Sarah Lyons. Rachel Polito. Anya Vaughn. Sung Yun Kim. Ezra Ayala Miller. Dongju Kim. Lakeisha Felton. Jasper Jimenez Marrero. Alexander P. Hala. Emeka Perkins Johnson. Tobias Alapadi. Leili Arai Tevelawi. Faith Shakira Chambly. Claude Mouton. Emma Barani. Gabriel Portillo Rodriguez. Lani Suhiga Smith. Yes. Kamal Williams. Gabby C. Stanley Jones. Celine Biak Cengiz. Gianna Puglia. Jade Manjean. Sonali Rawal. Andy Huber. Tenzin Lamo. Corinth Boone. Inzuri Parker. Hello. Katie Nidahara. Juju Nam. Sage Milligan. Jesse Durham Clem. Uriel Cruz. <laughs> Yebing Chen. Okay. Jashwan Lim. <laughs> Rebecca Luo. Will Timmy Aziz, Chair of the Architectural Design Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Congratulations.
Class of 2022 Architectural Design. This is Timmy Aziz, the Chair of the Department. On behalf of faculty, students, and everyone at the Department, um, sending you our very best wishes uh, for a brilliant, brilliant future. This is the moment that marks the beginning, just the beginning of your wonderful work that's uh, going to make our world, our cities, our neighborhoods uh, a better place for everyone. So Anna, Akari, Brittany, uh, Dan, Elise, Julian, Kate, Lena, Tayeb, and Theo, congratulations and well done. Catherine Rosas. <laughs> Sam Hollander. <laughs> Austin Harrison Wolf Kramer. <laughs> Akari Imamura. <laughs> Zhao Yu Chen. Brittany Ko. <laughs> Julian Gagne. <laughs> Tayeb Maksud. <laughs> Elise Kendrick Richardson. <laughs> Valerie Kate Perez. Lena Sadiq. <laughs> Anna Brackett. <laughs> Will Jenny Carson, Chair of the Art History, Theory, and Criticism Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Delia K. Hannon. <laughs> Joyce Leanne. <laughs> Will Rex Stevens, Chair of the Drawing Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I skipped ceramics. My bad. <laughs> Will David East, Chair of the Ceramics Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidate. Hello, my name is David East and I'm the Chair of the Ceramics Department. And I'm excited to introduce you to the Ceramics graduates of 2022. The past few years have been like no other and this year's graduates have navigated the most complex of times. They have navigated unusual twists and turns from taking leave of absence to the sudden need to turn their bedrooms into a makeshift studio. Their tenacity, passion, and commitment to ceramics, notably the least remote of all materials, has been incredibly inspiring. Together, we build and maintain the community and the future of ceramics. I'm so proud of your stewardship and excited for all that you will bring to this. Congratulations to the ceramic graduates of 2022. Donovan Kramer. <laughs> Billy Murray. <laughs> Alice Fraser. <laughs> Rachel Tanglau Wickfors. <laughs> Maggie Jones. Riza Shu. <laughs> 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 
Peirin Wu. And as a quick note, I really do love the ceramics department, truly. I didn't mean to skip you. Will Rex Stevens, chair of the drawing department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. For real. <laughs> Bring them up. Kobe Q. Sullivan. Anna Rose Redman. Will the Fiber, Fiber and Humanistic Studies, Film and Video, General Fine Arts, and General Fine Arts and Humanistic Studies candidates please come forward as instructed by the usher. And will Chrissy Day, Chair of the Fiber Department, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez please come forward to congratulate your candidates. <laughs> Isabel Dorvillier. Rivers Chinan Zhu. <laughs> Sylvia K. Rash. <laughs> Miyun Son. Grace Martin. Nina Pasulo. <laughs> Lucy Tsai. Audrey Lee Neva. Annika Chang. Yikong Lee. Isabel Oliva. Cameron Hebner. Lowell Zelenka. Ray Dratleff. Teresa Suen Bui. Sydney Snyder. Lucas Andrew Torrens. Dagny Leopold. Jennifer Trin Nguyen. Jasmine Nisa Ali. Christina Rodriguez. Elizabeth M. Cosgrove. Will Nadia Hiranaka, Chair of the Film and Video Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates.
Hello, I'm Nadia Hiranaka, Department Chair of Film and Video. And on behalf of the department, I would like to wish you each the best of luck as you move forward with your creative practice and begin the path towards your professional career. Remember that what you choose to put out into the world affects all of us. And so, in addition, I'd like to thank the future you, be it five, 10, or 50 years from now, for providing this world with thoughtful, sophisticated, and inspiring work. Congratulations to the class of 2022, and especially to the film and video graduating seniors who worked so hard throughout this year. Ariana, Uche, Diamond, Rachel, Xavier, Wei, Emerald, Ava, and Jules. I'm looking forward to seeing more from each of you. Jude Swearingen. Emerald O'Brien Harris. Yuche Lee. Tawade Eva Mulchan. Xavier M. Plater. <laughs> Diamond Francis. <laughs> Rachel Latlakar. Ariana Rod. Yep. Wei Chen Lu. <laughs> Will Rex Stevens, Chair of the General Fine Arts Department, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. There's no video, come on, run through. Shaylee Elliott. Kendra L. Lewis. Lauren Lee Burns. Anna Moog. Leanne Lin. Danielle Kunkel. Lila Church. Spencer Beals. Sid O. Naradzil. <laughs> Kai Rothkopf. <laughs> Zachary Greek. <laughs> Amanda Tetso. <laughs> Nikki Stebbins. Ariana Bandana. Lita Christian. Shad Shopnell. Amity Chan. Ria Bardwaj. Joey Crow. Zachary Morhayam.
Abigail Tanner. Lillian Rose DeHart. Ahmad O'Brien. Estefany Aru. Jiwan Lee. Heidi Kim. Dawn Lee. Jongwan Huang. Jiwu Shin. Suen Jung. Esther Shinru Du. <laughs> Emmy Yining Sun. <laughs> Hyok Kim. <laughs> Siu Chen. Jillian D. Oliviera. <laughs> Nano Zero. <laughs> Ashley Laura. <laughs> Debbie St. Angel. Liam DeFries. Asha Farmer. Inhyung Choi. Lisa Leitner. Zichi Liu. Mingham Sun. <laughs> will, will the graphic design in the humanistic studies and graphic design and illustration candidates please come forward as instructed by the usher? Will Isaac Gertman, Chair of the Graphic Design Department, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez please come forward to congratulate your candidates? MICA Graphic Design. During your time at MICA, the nation and world have been consumed with urgencies and emergencies. It's been a lot. At times, it was hard to imagine this day ever coming. But it's here, and we're here today to celebrate you, your resilience, your creativity, your sense of community and of justice, and your dedication to craft. I cannot overstate the profound impact that you've had on this campus, on your faculty, and on your fellow students. Congratulations, Micah GD. We can't wait to see where you go next. And after that, expect a call to come speak to the juniors in Flex. Congratulations. Malik Larkin. Ashton Poole. Jiu Su. Julie Park. Sungmin Lee. Matthew Carter. Tyrese Solomon. Xinyi Lee.
Subin Ha. Serene Lee. Yoon Jung Cho. Joel Ang. <laughs> Eugene Lee. <laughs> Owen Kim. <laughs> Chen Chen. Ying Han. <laughs> Shuang Wu. <laughs> Kelly Choi. Yesal Mei Yang. Janela Quintana. Miriam Fuentes Romero. Sierra Ayala Salvador. Lydia Song. Joyun Moon. Yutian Chan. Junyi Zhu. <laughs> Tianyu Wei. <laughs> Rebecca Lauren. <laughs> Olivia Escobedo. Rana Yelsin. <laughs> Caitlin Amar. <laughs> Fern Hassan. <laughs> Jay Lin. Kai Tiller. Jenny Lee. Jane Peterson. Connie Zhang. An Yun Shing. Yerin Kim. <laughs> Jun Cho. <laughs> Heather Park. <laughs> Elizabeth Leek. Penny Park. Aaron G. Carroll.
Rossi Yang. Yep. Devana Sanders. <laughs> Kenya De La Cruz. Ariana Vilches. Samantha Ho. Yunji Lee. Hiram Shin. Soe Chung. Kieran Henstenberg. <laughs> Maddie Ebian. <laughs> Kejia Zhu. <laughs> Anna Martins Morse. Iwan Yang. <laughs> Ellen Han. <laughs> Henny Bekele. <laughs> Brian Torellis. Marisa June Avila. Ian White. Zach Bacalos. Max Lee. Aaron Huang. Ibrahim Noon. <laughs> Melissa Cano. <laughs> Yi Wen Yu. <laughs> Rochi Lu. Shiwen Liu. <laughs> Will Alan Comport, Chair of the Illustration Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Greetings to all my illustration students right here in the front. My name is Alan Comport. I'm the Chair of the Illustration Department and on behalf of all of my esteemed colleagues in the illustration department and all of the underclassmen who've studied with you, we want to offer our congratulations and tell you how proud we are of all that you've accomplished. We're even more excited for all that you're going to accomplish in the coming years. You've beaten a pandemic, you've made all your deadlines, you've even made, made it through all those crits. Now go out into the world and record history, record our culture, and make it all a better place. We know you can do it. Congratulations once again. Maya Halko. Harvey Bailey. <laughs> Fernando Osuna. <laughs> Jalen Perry.
Noah Howard. Kyle Philip Ramsor. Jenny De La Cruz. Emily Quinn. Sahar Golriz. Lena Leem. Jay Lin. Sunbin G. Rachel Watts. Mays Salomos. Lauren Ignacio Galang. Ileana Nazario. Kaylin Delena. Cindy Shia. Grace Nicoletti. Rachel Scher. Ricky Wayner. Danny Jiawo. Honey Beam. Hasina Griffin. Jules Kennedy. Ariel Stuhlman. Grace Palmer. Haley Hatchell. Lachey Daniels. Kathleen Harrigan. <laughs> Leah Alligood. <laughs> Hannah Harder. <laughs> Emma Smith. <laughs> Owen Macklin. Arthur R. Arbitman. Sean Fisher. Sophie Danner. Drake Heptig. Jaron Jacobs. <laughs> Lena Lynn. <laughs> Nicholas Ha. <laughs> Molly Mitchell. Emma Wright. Karina Zhang.
Christina Chen. Sharon Lai. Haley Dunlap. Charisma A. Griffith. Sarah Berry. Zilu Lee. Ningyuan Zhao. Karen Kwok. Miranda Zhang. Lazaro Miguel Garcia. Mason Cho. Pinhas L. Siegel. Keb Mackenzie Bannister. Ian Lewis Springer. Andrew Kalkin. Alyssa Rodriguez. Lauren Corbin. Fiona A. Suerman. Serena Mercado. YY Liak. Yunjung Cho. Paulo Miguel Carambas de la Vina. Jerome Tia. Robin Im. Yeon Moon. <laughs> Catherine A. Marinen. <laughs> Isabella Clapp. <laughs> Madeline Dawson Caret Bennett. Ariel Price. April Lee. Raven Shu. Masha Ritvinsky. Catherine Eaker. Sojung Cho. Maya Taylor. Brianna Brask. Sherry Luo. Xiaoyin Yan. Okay. Muyang Lee. Yafe Liu.
Yufei Gao. Ergia Guan. Zihan Lin. Coco Su. Ann Ding. Stephen Wang. Amy M. Jensen. Aisha Maas. Danny Zhao. Juju Luo. Lin Liang. Tian Chu. Joey Liu. <laughs> Fenyi Lin. <laughs> Carrie Han. <laughs> Jingfei He. <laughs> Maria Abalos. Maria Diaz. Jesse O. Georgia Doan Khan. Sophie Ung. Ashling Tu. <laughs> Will the interactive arts, interactive arts and humanistic studies, game design, interdisciplinary sculpture, and painting candidates please come forward as instructed by the usher? And will Jason Sloan, chair of the interactive arts department, and Sam Sheffield, Chair of Game Design, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Hi, Interactive Arts seniors. On behalf of myself, Chair Jason Sloan, and the Interactive Arts Department, we would like to wish you the best upon graduation. We're very proud of all of the creative work that you've done during your time at MICA, in addition to all of the extraordinary work that's been made for this year's commencement exhibition. The IA department will always be here for you, and I encourage you to stay in touch with the program to share your new adventures, all of your creative pursuits, and the amazing new work that you're going to make as you embark upon your post mica life and career. The best of luck to all of you from us here at the Interactive Arts Department. Now, go write some code hack some electronics, and make some noise. Congratulations. Gabriel Chez. Emily Kwan. <laughs> Alia N. Payne. <laughs> Cheyun Lorraine Park. <laughs> Peter Turnbull. <laughs> Carter E. Ringo.
Parker Paneos. Ariana Candido Markowitz. Puhan Sun. <laughs> Will Ryan Hoover, Interim Chair of the Interdisciplinary Sculpture Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Laden Savar. <laughs> Carmen Jimenez. <laughs> Lika Su. <laughs> Jia Lee Bishon. <laughs> Rachel Banner. Ritter Zhang. <laughs> Wesley Bull. <laughs> Joshua Zachary Frick. <laughs> Catherine Rupan Mapp. <laughs> Anna Ruff. Hui Ha. Jia Lair Ling. Zoe Stutz Schweiger. Susan Alvarez. Jiyun Park. Wei Chen Leslie Huang. <laughs> Will Tony Shore, Chair of the Painting Department. And Jeanette Garrity Gomez, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Congratulations, Class of 2022 Painting Majors and Painting Minors. I'm Tony Shore, Chair of the Painting Department. You guys are incredible. You've persevered getting your degrees at one of the most difficult times imaginable. You've been able to shift gears from in-person learning to online learning to back to in-person learning. And you've been flexible through all of that. Whether going out with friends or attending classes or even spending tireless hours in your studio, you've done it all while wearing a mask but it has not affected your work and the pursuit of your goals. The current exhibition is a true testament to how amazing you are as artists and the incredible things that you're able to do. The painting department would like to applaud you for your many accomplishments and say congratulations again, you guys did it. Justin R. Darrow. Victoria Cho. Chloe M. Mosbacher. Julia Gould. Jessica Booth. Victoria Gehring. Charlotte Corcoran. Thea Ferdinand. Woo! 
Sarah Elizabeth Bresky. Sage Serenity Smith. Xavier Excel Lightfoot. Ariel Paleo. Matthew Napoli. Pearson T. Chambers. Kayla Foreman. Mary Tsai. Jinsang Yang. <laughs> Teresa G. Nicolella. <laughs> Sang Ung Park. <laughs> Sunny Han. <laughs> Janie M. Oglesby. Graham Martini. Gavin D. McSkeen. David Park. Branton R. Zhang. Yanbo Wang. Agnes Ho. Irish Marie Carpo. Dalen Chess. Aaron Petrosky. Will the photography, printmaking, humanistic studies in printmaking, product design, and product design and humanistic studies candidates please come forward as instructed by the usher? And will Nate Larson, chair of the photography department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates? Hey y'all, I'm Nate Larson, outgoing chair of photography. And I'm Jay Gould, incoming chair. And we're here to say congratulations to the photo department uh, graduates. Congratulations, Sonny. Congratulations, Chris. Congratulations, Evan. Congratulations, Kendall. Congratulations, Aaron. Congratulations, Leah. Congratulations, Iceland. Congratulations, Young Wan. Congratulations, Chris Pfeiffer. Congratulations, Maggie. Congratulations, Jesse. Congratulations, Winnie. All right. Evan Jensen. Aaron Kennedy. Tanya A. Kovacevich. Did I do okay? <laughs> Winnie Sue. Leah Jasmine Latte. Jesse Sun. Young Wan O. Oh. Chris Pfeiffer. Maggie Shaheen. Christopher Hall. Jessica Maria Laudadio.
Iceland, Denise Lopez Gualim. Sonny Fincham. Kendall Jordan. Will Jonathan Thomas, Chair of the Printmaking Department, and Jeanette Garrity Gomez please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Hi, my name is Jonathan Thomas, and I am the Chair of the Printmaking Department at the Maryland Institute College of Art. I taught senior thesis this past spring with my colleague, Eva Wiley, and my other colleague, Gil Deary, taught the senior thesis group in the fall semester. Uh, but of course, on behalf of all of the faculty and staff of the Printmaking Department and the Globe Press at MICA, I want to say congratulations to this extraordinary group of artists and designers working through print. It was great to have you back on campus working on our facilities and you really did an extraordinary job. All of your hard work is beautifully exemplified in your thesis exhibits, and we just couldn't be more proud of you. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you the printmaking graduates of 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> Michaela Metcalf. Quinn Russo. Grace Ritchie. Amit Ben Baruch. Emerson Alexander. Emma Wigginton. Hoi Kuo. Yen Wang. Aaron Moore. Alana Nicole Boya. Chloe Clark. Drew Morris. Will Jeanette Garrity Gomez remain? And will Juan Nagara, Chair of the Product Design Department, please come forward to congratulate your candidates. Hello, my name is Juan Noguera, and I'm the chair of the product design department. It is my pleasure to congratulate the product design class of 2022. On behalf of your faculty, your fellow students, we wish you all the best in what is only the beginning of a fruitful and successful career, doing work that you love and positively impacting the life of others. Kelsey, Cole, and Ben, you have made an invaluable contribution to our department with your presence and your work, and we can't wait to see the amazing things you will make. It was an honor and a pleasure to have you in my classroom, and I wish you all the best. Katie Zavadovich. Cole Kilbridge. Kelsey Bischoff. Provost Holmes, this completes the presentation of candidates for the Bachelor of Fine Arts. The class of 2022 is now ready for conferral of degrees. Thank you.
President Hoy, I have the honor of recommending those students who have completed all the courses in the prescribed curriculum as candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts. Will the candidates please rise? It gives me such pleasure to say the following words. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to this honorable degree. Congratulations. The newest graduates of Maryland Institute College of Art, will you please turn to face the audience? It is now time for our graduates to acknowledge and thank those special people who are giving them support and encouragement and who have enabled them to reach this important milestone. Will the graduate please applaud for parents, family, friends, and faculty who have made this moment possible for them? Thank you. Please sit. <laughs> and now, it gives you great pleasure to introduce Ash Poole, a graphic design graduate from the class of 2021, to provide some words on behalf of the classes of 2020 and 2021. Ash? Thank you. Good afternoon. So I transferred to MICA from my community college in the fall of 2019 and graduated in the spring of 2021. Like many other students, I rented a place in the city a short walk away from campus. And then because of this whole you know, global pandemic thing, that meant that my senior year, which was already going to be a weird return to the school, became a semester living inside a ghost town of sorts. Walking past MICA throughout that fall and seeing the campus completely emptied out felt strange and foreign, while also somewhat representative of what was happening throughout the world. What all of this means is that over half of my time at the school was spent entirely online inside my home. In fact, most of you out in the audience who do know me probably know me best through Zoom classrooms. In stark contrast to all of this is commencement last year, which was held outside the station building just across the street from us today. It was a unique day in that a few hundred of us were actually in the same space for the first time in about 14 months. While we were expected to sit at a safe distance away from one another, we kind of didn't. <laughs> Once one student left her designated safety bubble to hug a friend, we all followed and got together to celebrate with our friends who we had not seen for some time. Well, this was certainly not the ideal commencement that many of us were hoping for. It was a light at the end of the tunnel moment for many of us, and now that a year later, some of us have gathered once again, and more properly this time, to celebrate our achievements. I've been invited on this stage to say a few words for reasons that honestly escape me. <laughs> to those from the class of 2022, congratulations. I am so excited to join you today as you move into the world, as I did last year. To those from my own class of 2021, I'm so happy to be here with you once again. I know you likely didn't get the celebration you earned, and I hope you've been able to take the next step past MICA successfully, and that today is a celebration of where you are a year onward. Whether that's a successful career at a dream job, moving on to your graduate studies, or putting out the best damn art that you've made into this world. It would be negligent on my part to not fully acknowledge that the universe dealt us, in particular, a tough hand. And I do want to say that if anyone in this room is finding themselves in a tough spot today, I hope the knowledge that you've already gone through so much to get where you are is helpful. We all went through what was undeniably one of the most difficult years in the history of higher education, and we made it. Now, I don't personally feel qualified to give advice, but Micah made the mistake of lending me this microphone, so I'll try my best. 
As I look out at all of you today, who will soon be moving towards your next phase of life, I remember how it felt to be in your shoes last year. It was absolutely terrifying and exciting. What I think I want to tell you is that my biggest takeaway from my time here is the people I met. We are all truly privileged to not only have had the opportunities we've had, but to succeed at them and get to where we are today. And I truly believe that I am currently speaking to the most talented room of people in the country. I got to know many of you and to see the work you put out. And it was an honor to work side by side with you. It was intimidating to be in the same studio classes with you. It was equal parts frustrating and thought-provoking to loudly disagree with one another in our humanities courses. <laughs> Every single one of you made the school what it was while I was here. And being among this truly challenging crowd encouraged me to be a better creative and to push myself further than I had before. I have met some of my closest friends over the past few years, and it is my honor to celebrate with some of them tonight. In closing, I'd like to thank a few of the people who got me here. Thank you to my teachers from Anne Arundel Community College, all of whom truly prepared me for MICA. Thank you to Brockett and Isaac, who split the responsibility of being my department chair right down the middle during my two years here, and to all of the amazing teachers in the graphic design department. Thank you to the SVA, especially those who worked diligently along me yet last year as we worked hard to keep the school running for our webcams and our little Zoom squares and a personal shout out to everyone in this room who I've considered a friend. You know who you are and you are amazing. And lastly, a big shout out to every single person I've met here, honestly. You made my time here better. Thank you everyone and congratulations to all. As I have been an alumni for at least a year, I have the great honor to introduce Joyce Scott, who will provide an alumni welcome virtually. Joyce Scott has been a beloved member of the MICA family for over 40 years. She graduated MICA in 1970 and earned an honorary degree in 2018. A 2016 MacArthur Foundation Fellow, also known as the Genius Grant, Joyce has been a part of MICA as an alumna, educator, mentor, and role model. She has a message for those of us who walked across the stage today. I'm Joyce J. Scott. Congratulations, everyone. On behalf of the college, I am honored to be the very first person to formally recognize all of you as the newest members of MICA's Alumni Association. My MICA degree, the same one that you just received, has enabled me to have a worthwhile, beautiful, long career as a professional artist. My wish for each of you is that your skill, creativity, talent, and education enable you to have the same good fortune. I mean, you work for it, why not? As you know, the world is a little nutty right about now. But here's the thing, it's your world. This is your life. You get to decide what to do with it, how to do it, and the world needs artists and designers more than ever. You create everything. This is usually the time when someone tells you what to do. Instead, I'm going to tell you what not to do. Don't be quiet. Don't run away from things that scare you. Don't let anybody stop you. This is your world. This is your life. Do it from your heart. Don't pass up opportunities because they might be scary or you don't feel you're the one. These opportunities may help others who come after you. Most importantly, don't lose touch with your family, your friends, and your community, your fellow graduates, who are sitting right next to you right now. Because more than anything, those connections are going to support, energize, and inspire you in the years to come. They're your MICA family. Once again, welcome to MICA's worldwide family of dreamers and doers. Now, President, Hoy may introduce me as Dr. Scott, but if I ever see you on the campus, you can call me Auntie Joyce, or Miss Joyce if you're nasty. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> hello. Uh, I, first off, I want to say um, thank you for the opportunity for letting me speak today. Um, my name is Leanne Lin. And wow, you guys look so great today, which is crazy because two weeks ago we were all tired and miserable living off of granola bars and soda, but today we're living off of celebratory steak and red wine, so there's that. Man, I just, I just wanted to stop and look at all of your smiles. These are... <laughs> these smiles are the result of endurance, strength, tears, sweat. Hey, I'm, I'm really proud of us. Um, so uh, in front of me is actually a speech I wrote uh, a week ago. Um, and it's a perfectly fine speech. There's nothing majorly wrong with it. It's part of the script. Um, but alas, the Leanne seven days ago is not the Leanne today, so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll save that one for uh, grad school or my brother's wedding or one of the <laughs> others. But yeah, I couldn't get um, a lot of sleep last night. So I wrote a new speech and um, it's in my pocket. It's a little soiled because of the rain, but. <clears throat> so the weather today fortunately got better, um, even with the fiasco at Falvey. Um, I would know because I actually went outside today, which is rare. Um, I took a walk today, and admittedly, I had a moment of weakness. I Google searched best graduation speeches, and they were, they were pretty good. And they were all big name celebrities, and it seemed like they really hit it with the audience. And then I thought, maybe it's because they're famous. <laughs> Man, it would help if I'm famous. Like, I'm a little campus famous, but that's only because I pressured underclassmen into giving me meal swipes, so. <laughs> no, I'm not really famous or nearly as accomplished as Steve Jobs or, say, Barack Obama. I mean, there are only really two good things on my resume. One is that I held the door open for the dean of our school once, and uh, the other one is I can almost touch my toes. Um, so as you can see, um, there's a lot going for me after graduation. <laughs> Career development, please help me. <sighs> wow, four years already, huh? You know, four years ago, I was actually giving out my meal swipes. How the tables have turned. I remember my first class critique in freshman year forum. And I don't think anything in this world could have prepared me for a six hour grueling critique. That was brutal. It was long, overly personal. Everyone was repeating the same thing over and over again. And the word juxtaposition kept getting thrown around everywhere. At the time, I thought to myself, oh no, four more years of this? But then the teacher paused the class and said, Hey folks, I know we usually have lunch at noon, but for today, how about we power through so we can wrap up? I thought to myself, oh no. Lunch jeopardized? Someone called campus security. Four more years of this? I couldn't imagine for four more years being deprived of lunch and trying to be nice to people's artwork. But hey, I mean, look at us now. Four years later, we're still here. You know, critiques became more interesting, more insightful. Plus, there, there are worse things to be deprived of, like, like puppies and art walk. Um, this morning was my last chance to see art walk, so I, I just had to go. It was my last chance to see everyone's final artistic resolutions before leaving and just Wow, breathtaking, all of it, really. And, you know, I've been in school with you for four years, but I don't think I've ever really stopped to understand what it was that my classmates and peers were making. Seeing your artwork, 
allowed me to see a side to you that I never knew before. Like Jean, you're probably somewhere in this room right now. You are the sweetest and softest girl I know, and yet you made a death helmet out of needles. <laughs> Lena, I never knew you could crochet, and there were just so much more layers that I hadn't unearthed. Like, sure, I, I knew your name, I knew your major, I knew what friend group you were in, but I didn't know of your creative ambitions, your heartfelt projects your soul and practice. Yes, I knew who you were, but I didn't know what you did. Why were you at this school? Seeing everyone's work, I was just so overwhelmed with admiration, respect, excitement. And then there was that one bit of tiny remorse. Truthfully, I wish I slowed down a little. I feel like I was just so focused on getting it all over with, you know, passing my class, waiting for the next break, that I didn't stand back to look at what was happening. And what was happening was work that is thoughtful and loved, work that is provocative and personal, powerful yet precious. Today is when I realized and truly understood the bravery it takes to be an artist. Like, sure, any of us could have gone to a computer science school and gotten a boring corporate job, followed a lucrative career path, gotten our Tesla, retired at 40, played golf until we died. <laughs> That's a cool life. I'm, I'm sure my brother wants that life. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think any of us sitting here necessarily want that for ourselves. Being an artist goes far beyond what is easy or comfortable. It's having a vision and chasing it. It's making ideas exist in the real world. It's, it's telling your story. And we want to hear your story. And I know for a fact, the world is a better place with your story. Being an artist takes a profound level of courage. The courage to be vulnerable, even when a piece of you lays out in the open for everyone to see. It takes being stubborn, even when others doubt you and tell you your idea isn't good. It takes being emotional, even when the people around you think you're being overdramatic. Hey man, who cares? Tell your story. It takes being brave to stand alongside your work and be its mother. So feed it. Defend it. Nurture it. Sure, I'm up here talking to you guys today, but really, you are the ones that spoke to me. I just hope you don't forget us. You know, Michael was problematic, but never boring or forgettable. <laughs> I mean, we're a pretty good crowd, and you know, the other speakers have said it before, but I really think the Micah community has always been the heart of this school. If the heart stops, the school dies. Waving hands, warm smiles, greeting voices, sunlight reflecting off of brown, the smell of mulch under the tent. That is the sight and sound and smell of walking through campus I just will never forget. My thesis teacher, Fawn, approached me multiple times in the year. Leanne, stop socializing. Leanne, where's your work? Leanne, what did you make? To which I replied to Fawn, I, I made friends, <laughs> plenty of them. In fact, raise your hand if you would consider yourself my friend and please raise your hand anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. And friendships are just as much hard work as any art piece. It's just as rewarding, it's just as much effort. And just like something beautiful, Friendship appears in places you least expect it in. Students, teachers, staff, all alike. Thank you. I'd like to thank Ellen Stitchell for all your help this semester and my teachers for giving me a passing grade even though I was failing. <laughs> and for Houston. <laughs> you are a cyber bully in the grade book, but you are a great Italian nerd. <laughs> and of course, of course. Thank you to the parents for letting us attend Micah. You listened to our soft cries on scratchy phone audio for plenty of years.
right, and lastly, I know you all have dinner reservations. <clears throat> Class of 2022, thank you. In the face of creativity, there will be times when we succumb to a dim and hazy laziness, but in the face of that laziness, we will look for each other to reignite our resolve. And in the face of our beloved ones here at MICA, we offer our hands out as they have done for us and many others. Let us take four years of empathy, compassion, kindness, and pay it forward. And one last thing, please indulge me one more time. Okay, okay, here we go. When I say we finished, you say art school, okay? When I say we finished, you say art school. We finished! Art school. We finished! Art school. We finished! Art school. Thank you. Well, since no one can really follow Leanne, maybe it's good that we're reaching the end of this event. Um, thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Ash. And also thank you, Auntie Joyce, for providing such authentic and wonderful remarks to help us conclude this event. Um, you're truly inspiring. But speaking of inspiration, I really want to invite everyone again to congratulate our truly, truly inspiring class of 2020, 21, 2022 here. Before closing, I would like to invite everyone to the reception following these exercises. Hopefully, the sun is still out and the weather permits in Cohen Plaza in front of the Brown Center. And again, uh, even though you probably have dinner reservations, I also encourage all of you to not, who haven't seen Art Walk yet, at least catch part of it to really see the extraordinary work of um, this year's graduates. Will the marshals now take up their standards? Will the students and guests please remain at your seats until the recessional has been completed? And everyone, the 173rd MICA undergraduate commencement is hereby adjourned. Thank you so much for attending. Yeah.